checking a few levels under here. Just try and see what's going on. What's going on back there, guys? You going all right? Just looking around. Yeah, if you get a chip, no big swings of the pink. Hear that? There's some opal in there. But I've got to get that out without this coming down on my head. Everything's all so bloody loose. It could just come down and kill us in an instant. Yeah, I'm chipping straight at the level now. This brown stain is pure level. We just want to see if there's some colour in here. Like, we're finding bits and pieces, but we want something that's substantial. Yeah, there's little shells in here and that. Just see them just in there. You just want to smash it hard. Get out! Get out! Man. Get out! You get lucky you didn't bury yourselves, mate. All of you. I don't know if we should tell Mum about this one, eh? Probably not. Probably not. Definitely not. Oh, get the hell out of there, eh? We got work to do. You cl uh, clowning around in there. I think we, that's why we work above ground. Opal can make you do crazy things. All right, let's do some ripping, man. Yeah, so we got the ripper out now. Putting it to work and it seems to be chewing the dirt pretty well, so it feels like it's cutting through it like a, a butter knife. Deep in their open cut, 15 metres down, the Blacklighters are tearing through the walls of an abandoned underground mine in the hunt for opal-rich dirt to feed their processing plant, Opalzilla. It's a 1984 Hitachi 20 tonne excavator. A buttload of hours on it. It's got, it doesn't have a door, front window. Hopefully we can find that big pocket before the, the old girl the bed. Uh, we're probably up around 35 grand now to get to this point. So it's a massive cut, massive job. Yeah, it's getting hard to sleep at night now. All that money out, nothing coming in. Each time we go down, the ramp's starting to get steeper to be able to get out of the hole. I've been working with the boys for, yeah, around a year, year and a half. I've definitely learnt a lot, and I guess I'm the designated dump truck driver now. It's starting to get pretty deep there. Righto, Zabby, mate. Take that one away. It's heavy, it's hard to steer this. It's not liking it. Oh. Xavier, you right? Oi, careful, man. What just happened? Then your front wheel's just locked up and slid. Yeah, it's a bit heavy, this one, eh? 16-year-old Xavier is struggling to drive the Blacklighter's fully loaded 10-ton dump truck out of their 15-metre deep open-cut mine. Just roll back slowly to the mound and give it some more berries and try again. Righto. Don't really want to be messing up next to this hole here. Give it the berries, mate! I don't think it's easy for anyone to just get in and drive that truck reverse down into an open cut. It's a hard job. Even a seasoned campaigner, and he's just nailing it. So proud of him. We're putting all the dirt through Opalzilla that we get out the cut. If there's opal in the dirt, Opalzilla will 100% find it. Opalzilla is the Blacklighter's custom-built noodling machine. And the main tool they use to hunt the white opal, Cooper Pedy is famous for. Just 
just chuck the dirty one in. Belt chucks it in the trommel. Goes onto a shaker deck through the dark room under the lights. Travelling on a belt in the dark room, ultraviolet lights react with the water content in the opal, causing it to fluoresce. The black lighters have a parcel of crystal opal, featuring the full spectrum of colours. It's in the rough, and there's 480 grams. Let's get this home in the tumbler, eh? That's a win, man. That is a win. Before he flies out to the Lightning Ridge Opal and Gem Festival. You rang me, you said you got something special, so let's see it, mate. Have a look at that, mate. It's not going to go cheap either, so don't try your normal games. What do you got here, mate? 17 troy ounces of absolute yum, yum. chunks, mate. Look at the colour in that one. Like, get that up close. It's a nice piece, Mark. We want 170,000, and we'll, you can catch your plane. It's as simple as that. 170? 170. I can't do that. You know that. Mate, look at this stuff. Check it out. It's, Check it's, the gear mate, out, though, mate. Look, look at this stuff. That is insane. We're asking 10 grand an ounce. Mark, I've, I've got 70 cash. I'll give you 70 grand. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know we can't sell that stuff for 70. Mate. 90 grand cash. Nah. I'll give you 90. Nah. Nah. Give you 100 and it's final. That's it. 150, you know. Tw okay. That's taking well, 20 if grand you want off. 150, you might as well walk out. I'm not going to give you one. I'll come up another 10. All right. Well, you got to catch your plane. We'll, I'll, we'll, 140, I'm, I can't do it. You're lucky to get to see it first, eh? Hey? We'll right. see you soon. One we'll more. see you soon. We'll let you know. Let's go, Zavi. Come on, Zav. Come on. Mark. What, Mark. Sonar? 120. He's getting in the ballpark now. See? He wants yeah, it. Oh, he wants it. Let's go. So, no, and you play games with my emotions, yeah. mate. You do. You know how good that stuff is, oh, eh? It's good. It's good. That's what I'm saying. And that's where I'm at. It's the 120 and I can't... That's it. 120 will work, all right, mate? Well done. Thank you very much. Guys, we have just cleaned up, guys. Oh. The 120, that's our biggest sale of the season. That's just a massive, massive influx of everything for everyone. The machineries get a complete service, everyone gets a few bucks in the bank, and play on. It means we're fearless now. We can just attack. The Mooka Boys, Matt and Cosa Cathigan, are navigating a mountain of old diggings at Horse Paddock Opal Field. Yeah, spotting for Matty as he comes through. A little bit of a gorge, you know. Uh... Their plan to move their 20-tonne excavator through an unstable, washed-out gorge to work on a long-neglected claim they believe is still holding opal. Ooh, come on, we can do it. Ooh. Up. Steady. Oh. 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 Exactly what I thought. He'd be on the tip point. Oh, now he's stuck. The steep gradient and extra 1,400 kilograms of the digging buckets has the excavator overbalancing. You should have built a road. I'll just have to drop the bucket. We wanted to get in here and start digging as soon as we could. And now he's dropping his buckets and carrying on down here. So I chuck the buckets behind me. All right. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, bloody buckets, man. Stay up, stay up. The bloody able to dig, come on. Get one job! One job! The Mooka boys are battling to get their excavator and spare buckets through a washed out gorge. Ah, the wrong angle of the dangle. <laughs> sort of got it. Ah, it's crooked. There you go. Exactly what he's doing now is what I just wanted him to do to start with. Drop the other two buckets, make himself a road, and just drive through here. 
Matt and Cosa are trying to reach a patch of virgin opal ground deep in the horse paddock opal field. No one's ever had a look at this ground before, so uh, yeah, we'll get into it and uh, see what we can find. Looks like you broke through to a tunnel, mate. A tunnel. Definitely looks like it. That could be all of our virgin ground already gone. Have a look, man. How big is it? It looks about two metres deep. Definitely not what we're looking for. It's filled back in with some mud, so... Uh, we've got one more chance. If we dig on the other side, they've actually left us a little bit of material. But our chance has just got a whole lot less. All right, so now we're on the southern side of this uh, pillar here. It's going to go take it straight down in a trench and see if that tunnel ever ended. Oh, it's opened right up and there's no point digging here anymore. No signs of tunnels yet. Hey, there's a tunnel, bro. Is that? Yeah, right there at your heel. Yes, if you have a look down on the wall, you can see the very clear difference between the virgin ground on this side and all this old spoiled dirt on that side that we dug down on. There's also a nice vertical run of uh, gypsum coming up the wall. You can sort of see it leaching out. In a really rich opal ground, the, the opal can actually push vertically up as well. Yeah, no opal. No opal? As long as we get past that tunnel in the floor, we've got a good chance of some opal here. Whoa, whoa, Matty! Oh, heat! Whoa, holy hell! Oh. A hydraulic hose break on the Mooka Boys excavator has stopped their dig dead. Must have got a rock jam between the hitch and the boom. Look at that ding. That's, oh, that's right on a fitting, too. You're going to have to give life a call now. We don't need this. Team leader and heavy machinery mechanic Leif has been drilling for opal on another part of the horse paddock field. Uh, we got issues, bruv. Uh, we just done a quick hitch line. Yeah. You have to come have a look, bruv. Sorry, man, because we're dead in the water here right now. Come here. Yeah, all right. I'm just up with the drill and I'll, I'll, I'll shut it down and I'll bloody come have a look. Drill out of action and excavator down. The Mooka boys' desperate search for opal to continue their season is floundering. We're all at the end of our budget, so every time that we need to fix something, it's sort of all we have. What a mess. Yeah, sorry, man. All I could see was oil and cause he's screaming, man. I didn't even see a rock in here, like. Yeah. Yeah, having something break down, and it's always, you know, throws you back a bit and takes me away from what I'm doing up there, too, so. We might have to make a hose, eh? And we might be able to take one of these screw-on fittings here, put onto this one. So we end up finding a few old hoses that were left lying around. Cut the fittings off and make them one like that. Really handy having a heavy diesel mechanic on, on board of our team. Oh, what's the old saying in the field? We'll say guess once, cut once. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, boys. I'll stand to the side, eh? <laughs> Your beauty! Your beauty! Digging the floor out now. Luca boys are back in business. We're looking for some slabs of concrete here because uh, we're getting a fair good price for it at the moment. Up to 2,000 bucks a kilo if uh, it's good cracker material. It's got all these tiny little pebbles, the level stones and stuff, all stuck around the, the silica base. Known as concrete, the porous sandstone is made up of quartz granules of differing size and density. As the softer granules dissipate over millions of years, the minute voids left behind are impregnated by silica-rich water to speckle the sandstone with opal. You can see the level? Yeah, because it's part of it back up here. You see that, like... Yeah. It comes here and it comes, drops down. 
Is that a level right down there? I don't know, but it's weird. We need that colour, man. The Mooka boys have top grade concrete, weighing five kilograms. Partially treated, the process has revealed a full rainbow of opalized silica in the stones. Five kilos is 10 grand. I've had orders for this for six months, so we'll just go straight out the door, man. The good news is, is there's plenty more ground there. Heaps of potential. I'm really happy it's clean as too, so it's going to cut some very nice gems, man. Small ironstone boulders with intricate opal patterns at their centre. Each stone is formed over millions of years, and individual pieces have been valued at $1 million. This, this stone is phenomenal. Our season target is $150,000. So far, we're just shy of 25 grand. The pressure's definitely on at the moment. Isaac and I are traveling to the Lightning Ridge Opal Festival. We're gonna meet our lovely mother there. We've been going to Lightning Ridge when we were very young, maybe when Sophia was just born. It's a very competitive market. These people are coming to see big, beautiful, bright opals. Festival is literally days away, and we don't have anything of top, top quality. That sounds a bit more serious than a few tests. Well, just one of those things that happens, I suppose. You just got to do your own thing then. So our own thing at your mine, or? No, no you can't. You've got to do your own thing. Got to go and find your own mind. Huey's, uh, he dropped some bad news on us. He told us he's got prostate cancer. All right, yep, take care. Yes, and find plenty of opal. It's a lot to take in. I mean, obviously our first concern is Yui. We love this guy, we're obviously worried. Um, and then Isaac and I need to talk. What does that mean for us? Oh, well, the trench is still full of water. We need to get deeper, don't we? Yeah, well, that's an excavator. Okay. Everyone's mining their own claims, like, you know. Yeah, I don't blame We'd have them. to ask a big favour, and then we'd have to pay as well. $1,000 a, a day. Or... Well, I'll scrape together whatever I have. Uh, I'll make some calls. All right. G'day, Ben, how you doing? Hey. You digging at the moment? Yeah, mate, I'm pretty busy, eh? We've got a, a bit of a favour to ask you. We, we don't have many options here. We need someone with an excavator to give us at least a day's work. We'll pay for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mate, this would be a massive favour. We'd owe you one. It's time to reveal the magic, hopefully. We've got a bucket full of yow nuts. We're not really sure what's going on with them. There's a bit of colour. We're definitely going to store them all open. I really hope there's something in those boulders. Yeah. Even just one or two would be awesome. Something to, to take to the festival. Isaac and I found a pocket full of what seems to be Yawa boulder opal nuts. Now we're excited to saw them open. This is really the moment of truth for us. We've got Lightning Ridge Festival coming up super quick. Uh, we need some king stones. We need some super stuff to show there. We call these wet saws or lapidary saws. It's a 10-inch saw, but you can also put an 8-inch blade on it or a 6-inch blade. This is a sintered blade, so it's got the diamond going all the way through it. What I'm doing is I'm sharpening it. By tapping the diamonds, you're exposing the diamond and you're making them square, and that running against the rock cuts beautifully. The water is going to feed into the lapidary saw to um, help to saw through the, the yellow boulder nuts. The lapidary saw is connected to the generator. Everything's off grid, but we're ready to go. Now or never. Give this one a crack. Let's hope it's a crystal center straight away. Uh, that's all right. It's one in a thousand, so. We don't have a thousand, though. No, we don't. It's got one bucket. This one feels a bit better. All right. Come on, baby. Useless. That's useless. Bye. We really need that to make. That's a better cut. Put on your mouth. That actually sounds good. Yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> hey! What is that? <laughs> Look at this! Oh my god! What? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? This is unreal. To be that's that is tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> that is that is the maddest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a rock like that. That's our kingstone. <sighs> go! 
water, babe. We did it. We did it. I think we're, we're both shaking. Um, we thought we were going home with nothing. But I mean, this is opal mining. You, you really, it's a lot of hard yakka. It's a lot of um, disappointments. And then it's all really just for stuff like this. Um, this is, is beautiful. It's an absolutely epic yow. And uh, there's nothing I can imagine that could happen in my life that would give me the same buzz as what just happened. The opal whisperers have a yawa boulder nut, blue green with red and yellow highlights. It's been split and weighs three and a half kilograms. The kingstone that we need to turn up proudly at Lightning Ridge Festival and have something unique that I'm, I'm certain no one else will have. At the Lightning Ridge Opal and Gem Festival, the streets and local businesses of the town transform into a stall-laden marketplace. Hello, little darling. You're late, guys. Hello, Mummy. Let's get going. Hi, My beautiful mum, Suzanne Andreo. Uh, for me and a lot of people that know her, she is the ultimate original Opal Queen. This lady knows everything there is to know about Opal. She's been in the business since the beginning of time. Thank you. I've got a couple of people pre-arranged yeah, over me. Facebook and everything. We need the money. That's the thing, we Here do need is. the budget. Hello. Hi, Zach. How you going, mate? Hey, man, you made it. How's yeah. the drive? Finally. Yeah, no, good. You met Sophia and... Yes. Hello, no, buddy. I haven't, actually. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice About to meet time. you. What was your name? Uh, Eric. 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 Nice yeah. to meet you, How Eric. You? I'm not going to muck around. I remember you told me you had a you pretty special piece. You specimen? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it. OK, I'll get it. I'll yep. get the specimen. OK, sounds good. Fresh out of the ground. All right. Doesn't look like much, does it? No. It's no, a dirty old Not rock. at the moment, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, not bad. You can see it from here, it's jumping out. I'm sure you have a, a sum in mind and... Yeah, well, let's get to it. Know, I don't want to insult you either, so... Yeah. Tell you. me, tell me what you want. So what All you're right. looking at. OK, we'll cut to the chase. It's 40 grand for both, for the pair. Yeah, it's, that's, yeah, it's more than I've got to spend. I, I don't want to let it go. Um, would you consider splitting the two up? <clears throat> Just out of interest, Eric, what did you have in mind for half? Half? 20,000? It's got to be at least 30. What about 23? No. I don't want to let it go, cos if you... I don't know, blame you, it's nice. I'm here now. Um, I want to make... I want to make a deal on this, at least half of one. And uh, look, I, I can probably do... Meet me halfway between 27 and 23, 25. 25,000 for one? Yep. Deal. Okay. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you very much. It makes me so happy that my children are interested in taking on our legacy. You can let it go now, Mum. Can let it go now. No. <laughs> the kids have grown up having their holidays at an opal mine all their lives. <laughs> so it's pretty much in their blood. Yeah, bye bye. Sorry, <laughs> Mummy, I'll find you another one. <laughs> it makes me really, really proud. Heavy rains in Yawa have left Sophia and Isaac's only working mine inaccessible. Desperate for high quality stock to sell at the Lightning Ridge Opal and Gem Festival, they've called in a favour from local excavator operator Ben Bowen. Yeah, and here we go, Sophia. Yeah. The existing trench, which is full of water, 17 foot deep, is just past the bucket and it runs about. 30 foot that way. So he's going to make an extension of that trench. It's an important time to start spotting because in Yawa, uh, it's well known there's multiple levels. The, the shallowest level can be as low as 3 foot, 35 foot, and then 50 foot. There's been miners in Yawa who have just literally graded the earth and just seen all the colour come up like stars in the sky. You know, they've made their fortune in 3 foot of dirt. So we need to be spotting from the very outset. There is a slip running down on the side of the wall, and this is what's coming out of it. That's that's coffee potch. And what coffee potch is, it's basically silicide clay, clay that's been impregnated by silica. You need silica to be present in order to find opal. But the other thing you need is ironstone. We haven't found ironstone yet. Finally digging. Check it out. 
purple clouds, like deep purple. That's a big storm and it's coming fast, mate. I just hope that Ben can get his work done because we're guaranteeing him a certain amount of hours. You hear that? That's thunder. This has got to get called off. Twenty mils of rain last night. I know. It's been absolutely hammering down. Do you think the mine's okay? I think it'll be a swimming pool, personally. In desperate need of stock for the Lightning Ridge Opal and Gem Festival, Sophia and Isaac are relying on a freshly dug eight metre deep trench on their house claim to find Opal. All right, well, it's not completely filled with water. Yeah. How are we going to get down there? Abseiling's a good idea. Just sort of steps there. We just tie it off on the tree. That's one way of doing it. Sophia's brought along the um, abseiling rope. This is strong, this stuff. See at the bottom. All clear. Wait, it's not the safest. It's a fair bit of rock still coming down. There's a lot of loose ground on top. All good? OK, all clear. All right, I'm excited. Just be careful, hey? Whoa. Wait. Ah. That... Oh, mate. Find your step. Find your step. That whole side just gave in. Watch your head. That's a good start, isn't it? Jesus Christ. You all right? <sighs> So what do you reckon? I mean, this... There's a level just down to that point. Though. So this area actually looks good under there. Yeah, that's black ironstone in that. Awesome. There could be sea mobile here or nuts or anything, I mean. That's, that's a great sign. It uh, is a good it's sign, ironstone yeah. and coffee pot. Um, two huge pointers that there's Yawa Opal, Opal nut here. Should we have a dig? Yeah. All right, we'll get in there. Let's drop that cliff down. Hey, look at that. So that. Look, look at it. Look how black and shiny this is. Yeah. Another good sign. All we need now is opal. Yeah. <laughs> it's like purple. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but there's, there's definitely elements here I've never seen before in my life cutting or mining. The iron stone's really starting to form. It's yeah. getting more colourful. Might get you to spot here. Yeah. Is that iron stone? Yeah, that's okay. gone solid. Look at that. You can see it's shining. Okay. Now, that is a boulder. That's a boulder. Listen to it. It's like glass. All we right. have to get that out by hand, I think. Get it, Sophia. You'll get it out. Just do it. Just don't break it. Whatever you do. Do you want me to try and wiggle it out as you get under her? Yeah. I'll see if I can. It's pretty wedged in there, eh? Yeah, here, here, this here is coming go. out now. That's it. That's it. Oh, that's a nice chunk. That's a boulder. Yeah, there's more there. That's there's what we more. Want. Yeah. Zach, there's like tiny little nut formations in this. There's something in this for sure. Uh, here we go. Oh, oh the weight of that. Nut. No colour. It's a fair few. Yeah, that's a whole bucket full. It's so chuffed. Like, that's the first sign of colour on this dig in this trench. I can't wait to open them up and have a look. It's time to reveal the magic, hopefully. We've got a bucket full of yow nuts. We're not really sure what's going on with them. There's a bit of colour. We're definitely going to store them all open. I really hope there's something in those boulders. Yeah. Even just one or two would be awesome. Something to, to take to the festival. Isaac and I found a pocket full of what seems to be Yawa boulder open nuts. Now we're excited to saw them open. This is really the moment of truth for us. We've got Lightning Ridge Festival coming up super quick. Uh, we need some king stones. We need some super stuff to show there. We call these wet saws or lapidary saws. It's a 10-inch saw, but you can also put an 8-inch blade on it or a 6-inch blade. This is a sintered blade, so it's got the diamond going all the way through it. What I'm doing is I'm sharpening it. By tapping the diamonds, you're exposing the diamond and you're making them square, and that running against the rock cuts beautifully. The water is going to feed into the lapidary saw to um, help to saw through the, the yellow boulder nuts. The lapidary saw is connected to the generator. Everything's off grid, but we're ready to go. Now or never. Let's give this one a crack. Let's hope it's a crystal center straight away. But that's all right. It's one in a thousand, so. We don't have a thousand, though. No, we don't. It's got one bucket. This one feels a bit better. All right. Not long, babe. 
useless. That's useless. Right. We really need that to make. That's a better cut. Come on, you That actually sounds good. Yeah, it sounds right. Oh my god! What? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? This is unreal! To be that's that is tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> that is that is the maddest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a rock like that. That's our Kingston. <sighs> we got it, mate! We did it! We did it! I think we're we're both shaking. Um we thought we were going home with nothing. But I mean, this is opal mining. You, you really, it's a lot of hard yakka, it's a lot of um, disappointments, and then it's all really just for stuff like this. Um, this is, is beautiful. It's an absolutely epic yow, and uh, there's nothing I can imagine that could happen in my life that would give me the same buzz as what just happened. The opal whisperers have a yawa boulder nut, blue green with red and yellow highlights. It's been split and weighs three and a half kilograms. So, what do you reckon? Is it going to be today? Yeah, mate. You see how this level here, it's got a taper. It's heading down. It's tracking deeper. So, we're chasing this level downwards. All this dirt in front of me, we've got to get through it to get to the opal. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of blood, sweat and tears in that direction. All right, Josiah, 15 metres. There we go. Rookie miners Lisa Van Heiningen and Josiah Kotzer are halfway through their first season, working eight and a half metres below ground with a minimal setup. Two jackhammers and a 40 year old hoist. This is our hoist, and it's a very crucial part of our daily activities. It takes up all the soil and dumps it on the top side, and that allows us to keep driving forward. We're another bucket closer, Lisa, to fame and fortune. Riches and treasures. Oh, what's that? What is it? Bearing just fell out. Of the bucket. Oh, the bucket's just uncome. It's come off the rails and it's got stuck. I don't know how that happened. The Digi Diggers are a new breed of opal miner with ambitious plans to go green. We're at Bush, we just can't just plug into 240 volt. We're in the middle of Outback Australia. There's no power around. We survive off the sun's power. The setup costs to date are $100,000, but their ultimate goal is to sell opal in the metaverse using a virtual marketplace. We're advancing. We've got our bus in there. There's a tree. We're rebuilding the whole mine. In, in the metaverse and we want this digital shop where everyone over the whole world can buy our opals. But for that, we need to find opals because it's gonna cost us a lot. Yeah. <gasps> oh, our season target is $60,000. So we're on our way. Bearing, it's come off the bucket on the hoist. It just got stuck. Every time we're closed, it's just like, problems with this hoist. This hoist? Every time. I don't know what it's doing, it just always keeps breaking. All right, Lil, let's go see. Maybe we can fix it. A sheared bearing on their 40-year-old hoist has brought the Digi Diggers operation to a grinding halt. Brad is an old friend of us. He has um, some bearings for us that we can use. The only thing is that they are in his, own, his old mine shop and he hasn't been down there for I don't know how long, so he doesn't really know what's the go. Cool, you've checked everything? Checked it. Hope there's no snakes down there. So yeah, just be careful on your way down. It's about a 60-foot shaft, so hopefully it connects to the other one, because we need to get there to get the bearings. All good, Josiah? All good. All right. How are you doing? We made it. Yeah, good work. We're down. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so that's the direction that we need to go in. 
Looks like there's a wall just before the shaft. Like, what? Oh, no, dead end. Dead, dead end. end, dead end. What do you mean, dead end? Look this right. way. I'll have a look over here. Yeah, that's backfield. That's backfield. All right, this way. That's where we just came from. Oh, man, this is a maze. And a sketchy maze. This is no way, this is no way. Which way? You come. I think this one. This looks pretty sketchy. Yes. Looks sketchy. I don't even know anymore if we came from left or right, so... It looks like someone's... What do you see? You see equipment? Yeah, some lights. Oh, my God, yes! Mate, we must have taken the longest <laughs> way around. <laughs> yep, there it is, the ladder. And? <laughs> There's bearings on there, yes! <laughs> They're good. We only need one, really, but we'll take two. Bloody bearings. Oh, oh. Well, we've got it. Bloody yeah. opal mining. Let's fix this thing. So, yep, this is going to help us get back to work, find some opal. Does that fit? Yep, that'll be it. Nice! We're on it again. So crazy. So we take it out, the whole section. Some color here. <laughs> Very good. Ew! Wow, Messiah. Messiah! Look at this! Oh, sh Whoa! And it looks like it goes all the way through, and there's more in the wall, even. <laughs> oh, look at that! Wow, blue, green. Wow. Right, let's drop it down. Yep. Both heads. Okay, wait. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Look at that. Oh, it's like a heart. Turn it around. All oh, right. <laughs> Looks like a heart. It's literally... A broken, broken heart. It's a broken heart. Okay, I, I'll have this piece. Oh, you have that piece. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We found an opalized broken heart, 30 foot underground. We've got everything, red, green, it's all there. The whole rainbow's there. Well, but there's still color there. This is the moment we get a whole yearly target in one day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna pull it, it's just, it's there. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Holy shit. That there is gorgeous. What a big hunk of crystal, look at it. And there might be more. Whoa, look at that. Wow. Holy <laughs> sort of awestruck by this, you know? We're in a bit of a shock, what we're seeing right now. So beautiful, it's... <laughs> Look at that, this is gorgeous. It's here. <laughs> You're the one that's supposed to cry, Lisa. <laughs> Well, let's just go through all of this. Yep. The buyers that are coming into town are high-end jewelers, so we're suspecting that they're going to want crystal and high-quality crystal at that. This is our kingstone. This is its just an amazing piece. It's just full crystal. You can see it with the sun. It's just shining straight through it. It's just an amazing piece of art. <laughs> the Mooka boys are desperately trying to jumpstart a 50-year-old truck which hasn't run for 10 years. Let's try again quickly. See? The 15-ton dump truck is vital to transport mine dirt from the horse paddock claim to their opal processing plant, two kilometres away. It's about to back the truck up to the digger for the first load. Bit of exciting times. I hope we can get 
few loads up and get that noodle fired up. See if we got some opal in the ground here. First time we've had the truck out, and we're getting it loaded right now. So, no, it's definitely excellent. Woo! First load done. First load in the truck. First load, man, ready to go. Ah, first load, so happy. Yeah. Yeah, blew the tyre. Shredded the tyre out. Yeah, I don't think it can handle the weight. It's blown that other side out. These two here have got cracks in them. So they're about to blow out as well. Yeah, it's definitely not good. Hopefully we can uh, get this load up to the noodle, run it through it and uh, find some money. Tires, once they sit out in the uh, outback sun here for year after year, they really dry out, they start cracking. And now that we put weight on those uh, tires, a couple of them are just completely blown out instantly. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Yeah, we made it. Most of the tires are still on. The truck just made it. The Mooka boys have finally hauled 15 tonnes of opal bearing dirt to their 40 year old processing plant. We're trying to fire up the noodle. It's the first time this season. and. It can be a bit temperamental straight away, so let's see how we go. Yeah, the generator's running, so yeah, that's our power plant for this whole machine, so that's a good start. So hopefully all these belts and the motors are gonna roll for us and it might be all right. Jack is working. I'll try the belts out. Long conveyor. Yep. This is your feed belt. I'll run the feed bed. All right. Roger. Stop spinning! Hold up. There's it's jammed on here again. It looks like it's starting to turn it, but it's something jammed in there. That's how we get all the dirt out, so without that hopper belt, it's not going to work at all. What's going on, boys? I don't know how it doesn't move, eh? Hey! 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 hey. Shut it off! Is that wrong? Oh. Shut it off, bro! Motor keeps going on and off, on and off. Ah, oh, hot. Running hot. Start wrong with the motor. You can't touch it, eh? Yeah. You smell it and something. Ah, that's not good. Me, man. Oh, damn. Man. Sound real, eh? Mate, without that belt, we can't get no dirt up here. Oh. Always something broken. I don't know why we do this some days, boys. It's just always freaking fixing. No good, boys. What else can we do, man? The best thing we can do is just tip it out. Look through it with black lights. We believe something's in there, so. Oh, man, there's opal all over the place. Spread it out the loader. Man, we only need a couple of ounces. Get some money up so we can get fixed. Yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll have to wait for it to get dark, yeah. yeah. That's all we can do for now. Just gotta make do with what we got. So we got a loader, we got some black lights. We'll spread this load out and hopefully we can find something the old way. Quick, Matty, our sun's nearly gone, mate. There he is. The opal's gonna sit on top of these little humps and we're gonna find it all. I'm just hoping and praying that there's enough in there so we can keep going. Yeah, clock's ticking now getting towards the end of the season as well, and we haven't had a good win, so not looking too too sharp for the Mooka boys. Without their processing plant, the Mooka boys are resorting to black lighting by hand. It's got to be something in here from everything we found before. They're searching a 20 centimetre thick layer of dirt in which they found traces of opal. The opal glows up under a UV light, so it's what we do. We run over it with a UV light and look for anything that glows up, just like a white shirt in a disco room. All right, what do we got here? Very important that we find something tonight. You know, all our eggs are in this basket. We only got one load up here. Oh, yeah, there's a piece right there. Huh? Oh, yeah, seams. Ooh. Yeah, man, greens and reds. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I can see that from here. Oh, that's a big bloody stone that you can't open. Mate. Oh, this... man. It's open all over it. That's unreal. That's beautiful. Brilliant colour. 
I mean, that's only thin, but God, that's just, it's all adding up. Let's keep going, eh? Let's just hope. We only need a couple of stones. Yeah, right, keep looking. Oh, boys. Give me some light. Oh, what? Hey! Far hey. <laughs> out! What's that honey matrix? Check that out, man. Look at this one. Far oh, out! Got reds, blues, greens. That's a lot of stuff, too. Oh, check yeah, that out, bro. Yeah, that's our money right here. Holy sh we got our money. Oh, that's excellent. The Mooka boys have honey matrix opal, named for its orange hue. It's scattered with vibrant flakes of green, red and blue. They also have angel stone, pale sandstone boulders with deep, colourful veins of seam opal. Yeah. Get them on the scales, see what we got. We need some bigger scales by the time we finish this floor. There's some nice reds and greens coming out though, big flashes. All right, and that is just a touch over 20 ounces. Gangster. Righto. So what's that, a 500 bucks an ounce? I'm 10 grand, boys, that's not bad for the week, eh? What a book we had. That's all right. That's not bad at all. Yeah, well, we still got these specie stones, too. I think we'll get 600 bucks for that lot. Yeah, nice. That's enough to do the tyres, get a noodle running, man. We should yeah, be able to find a motor for that, too, eh? Mm. Not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just all up, you know, we're evaluating at about just over 11 grand. That's more than enough for us to get, you know, a bit of a payday each and get the tyres for the trucks and fuel. Yeah, we can get, get the show on the road. So we're really hoping this year we can have that big win uh, to make sure that our families and our partners continue to support us uh, in our dreams as well. Uh oh good week, boys. Another struggle, another win. Yeah, it definitely wasn't an easy week, but uh, you know, it was a success at the end of it, wasn't it? The more of those shares, the one of the Six. Six. Four. <laughs> OK. Today's the day that we take this power plant to the mine, and we trial it for the first time. The main cost for opal miners is fuel, so um, we're super excited to mine on solar energy. The Digi Diggers, Josiah Kotzer and Lisa von Heinigen, have put a gruelling three months of design and construction into their new two kilowatt solar power plant. So we had to build the power plant at uh, Josiah's parents' house because we didn't have enough power here at the mine for the welding machine. We've got a lot of money tied up on this power plant. Costing $4,000, they now need to move the solar power plant with the help of heavy haulage contractor Lloyd Nodoff to their mine 1.2 kilometres away. very important moment, so it's quite exciting to see it finally on the back of the truck and heading off to the mine. There we are, baby, home sweet home. Power station's going here. OK, yep, up. You want it more that way? Beautiful, yep. Uh, yeah, boom out a bit more, or come down. Oh. Careful there, the hole. Oh. Josiah, careful! You're not... Don't fall in. Far out. That got my heart racing. I almost lost my Josiah there. It's 30 foot down. Down there. That's fine. I thought I was gone. Yeah, like, uh, that, was, that was crazy. I was just too focused on the job. So these are the solar panels. They're capturing the energy of the sun. Batteries are here, so the power goes into the batteries. And then this inverter will turn the, the power of the batteries, which is 24 volt DC, into AC. And then from there, we'll be powering our jackhammers and our lights. All right, so this is the moment. Let's plug it in. Just check the batteries. Maybe when we got them here with the truck, they got moved or something. Batteries are all good. In Yawa, the Digi Diggers' custom built solar plant, designed to power their entire mine and equipment, has failed. 
So what can it be? You can check the settings on the system. In theory, it should be all good. This is the charge controller and the inverter. So in theory, it should be working. The mobile is Bluetooth to this old system. Oh, here we go. It's not, it's not turned on. <laughs> all right. Fuel is definitely one of the biggest costs in mining. It's not sustainable, especially when you don't know if you're going to find opal or not. And rather than spending $6,000 a year in fuel, by going solar, it allows us to mine almost for free. Tan, 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 tan. Here we go, moment of truth. Moment of truth. Yes, let's go mining on solar energy. All our money is in this. It's a big gamble because we can just lose everything, you know, if we don't find Opal. There's no plan B, so we've got to find Opal and we are running out of time. Once the summer starts, you don't really want to be mining down here. Look at this. Check out that. Far out. What did you hit? <laughs> That's just a crystal nut. This will be another piece. Did you see anything come out? No, it might be here. Whoa. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh, wow. Why'd you have to hit it for, oh, Lisa? Oh. <laughs> if I wouldn't have hit it, we might have thought it was just a rock. Gee. Look at that. It's gorgeous. That was the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Woo! When you hit it with a jackhammer, you've, you know, you've exposed color in there. So many blues and greens. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful specimen. It's hard to price opal because opals are unique. This could be worth a lot more, but what if we cut it, like, straight through there? And we could be looking at you know, 500 grams, 600 grams of pure crystal. It's a gamble because if we made the cut and there's nothing there, we can't take it back. We need the money. We can't just go play around. How much would you sell it for? I reckon start at a 20. How low would you go? We can't just sell it for like two grand if you I want know, to. I know, but we it. also got no money in the bank. The Digi Diggers have unearthed a single Yawa nut. Blue green with flecks of yellow and pink. It's in the rough and weighs 2.4 kilograms. Jewelry artist Grace Griffin has driven 1,400 kilometres from her workshop in Melbourne, seeking opal for her next collection. Desire's just giving me a call. They're on some colour, so um, I'd love to see what they've got. How are you doing? Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, you too. Hey, hey. I'm Lisa. Hey, I'm Grace. Nice to meet you. What have you got to show me? We've got a really nice specimen, actually. I hope you like it. Mm. Yeah. If you want to uh, have a look and reveal mm. it yourself. Wow, nice, guys. This is fabulous. Yeah. Really cool. cool. What are your thoughts on it, price-wise? There is a lot of potential in this stone. I think you can make a lot of jewellery out of it. Mm. So we're thinking um, 20, 20 grand. I think that might be a little bit out of my budget at the moment, but... How would you go for 10? We can go down a bit, but maybe like 10 is a little bit too low, I think. What are your thoughts, Josiah? Lisa does the talking because I don't like letting things go. That's the biggest nut we've found here. This is interesting for me, but yeah, 20 is too high. I could meet you at 15. Yeah, I think that's fine. Fabulous, yeah. Thank you. That's amazing, great. <laughs> the sale went really well. It's exciting and I'm glad I went to Grace. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how it all went. Stunning, fabulous colour, lots of potential for rings, pendants. I've got, yeah, a whole collection in mind. We made the right decision in not cutting the nut. She loved the colours in it. We needed the money, we sold it, so we're good. I've already got too many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we got 15,000 and that allows us to keep moving forward. It feels great to just find Opal on the ground, first time on solar panel. You ready for me to fire up? Yeah. All right. OK, here we go. Shut 
Shake it first. All right. The shaker draws a lot of power. If we turn everything on at once, we'll blow the generator up. That long conveyor. All good? Yeah. Feed bin. Yeah! We got a recon motor. Jammed it on. Working a treat. I'll go get some dirt the lighter. Yeah, kill him, man. All right. This year, we unfortunately lost our claims to uh, rain damage. That's a lot of mud, man. This is special. We've got a lot of pressure to make sure that we keep the opal coming in. Halfway through the mining season, the Mooka boys have been forced to transport opal-bearing dirt to their noodler at Hallian Hill from their claim on the treacherous opal field, Horse Paddock. Our season target's uh, 150,000. We're only at about 40,000 so far. This season come with a lot of added pressures. Boys, I got a little bit of news. Looks like I'm going to be a daddy. Is it yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really need this opal now. Yeah, babies do take a lot. <laughs> yeah, bloody oath. Opal mining's bloody hard work, but it's a thrill of the chase. And you get to supply the world with some of the, you know, the best quality opal that you know, Australia can produce. Hey, Lave, it's starting to open up here. We're getting out, bub. We've struggled quite hard. No one actually pays us an hourly rate to work here. If we don't find opal, there's no food on the table. Yeah, we believe the big wind's just around the corner. Yeah. 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 Oi, the bell's lighting up! Life Tanza inherited their opal processing plant, known as a noodler, from his late father, Paul. It was hand built by my mum and dad around 38 to 40 years ago. A lot of sweat and tears and yelling, but it got done. Powered by a 40 year old generator, the ageing system uses shakers to remove dust and dirt from freshly mined rock, and conveyors take it into the black room. Here we go, all right. Been waiting for this for a while. Where UV light causes water in the opal to fluoresce. Usually you'll see uh, a whole heap of glowing rocks all over this belt. We go and nuts to pick them all up. Nothing like a bit of colour to pick up morale. we got. So let's hope this goes all right. We need this bloody loader. Oh! I thought that was game over then, eh? Nothing like a 30-foot drop to get the heart going, eh? <laughs> yeah, no opals worth that amount, eh? Cheers, boys, eh? Help me out there. Look, it definitely could have been worse. But yeah, we'll get them brakes fixed up and continue on. Beauty, all right. Getting that dark room, fire up. So we managed to get those brakes fixed on the loader. Now we're back at it, hoping for Opal to roll up on the belt again. Yeah, we've got to pull some Opal out of something. Kids are starving. Mrs. Cranky. Here in Anamooka, some patches of uh, level that we dig are actually quite wet. This thing's not designed for wet dirt, so it just bogs up the shaker. At the moment, nothing. Maybe the level's too muddy still and we can't see it, or maybe there's nothing in there. Nothing's coming through on the belt at the moment. You feel the shaker slowing down. I've got to see what's going on out there. Took the generator. Oh! <laughs> God damn! Is anything gonna go our way? What? Alternator snapped off the bracket. Buddy lost the belt. Everything. Far out. And that's air cool too, isn't it? Yeah. We just nearly cooked the journey. No belt on there means no fan, which means the engine got really hot. Well, at the end of the day, like it, it, this could put a whole halt to open mining season.
Yeah, we're just gonna check slowly around what we just dug because there might be some more here. We got a big band of level and rocks here, bro. Yeah, running straight up in this wall. Big rocks in here, man. It's little rocks over here, but it's like, yeah, it's definitely not as thick as what you got over it's there. It's colour of ours, yeah. not much. Give us a look at that. Hold that, hang on. Oh, yeah, there's a big band and everything. Yeah. That's colour. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, man. Oh, bro, look at that. Oh, wow! Killer, bro, killer. I think we just found our first good colour pocket, man. Oh, but after the week we've had, feels like I just had a big shit after a week of constipation. <laughs> <laughs> With team leader Lay for way buying machinery parts, it's up to Coza and Matt to rub their opal hall and maximise its value. Some big bloody chunks in here, man. Yeah, if only half of this comes up. Some good colour here. It's not huge stuff. Look at that, bro. That little chip there's got a red flash. Oh. So if we get this whole backside clean. Yeah, just give it a light grind and take that dirt off. Look him, bro. Not too bad, man. I'm getting a bit of a big broad flash. A little piece of honey. That's nice. Colour all through it. The Mooka boys have seam and concrete opal with flashes of blues, reds and green. Partially rubbed, there's 28 grams of seam opal and 10 kilos of concrete. We've got a lot of, lot of material here, man. After 15 years of finding stones and selling them ourselves, we get pretty good at evaluating our own material. We'll easily get five grand an ounce for this opal. Yeah, well, what do you reckon is matrix? That's the stunner one here, really. Chuck it on the scales, man. Let's see what she's weighing, eh? 5.5 ounces. That's, you know, 100 bucks an ounce. That's sweet. Five grand of opal, 10 grand of concrete, and uh, bits and pieces. Easy to fame, man. Not bad at all, bro, not bad at all. It's been one of the craziest weeks we've ever had opal mining. Coming up with 15 grand's worth is an awesome win. We're digging in the right spot. We're definitely happy. The Blacklighters. Mark Ianson, 16-year-old stepson Xavier, Paul Kuhn and John Nasser have spent a gruelling 12 months excavating thousands of tonnes of dirt, attempting to reach old-timers' tunnels. Yeah, we sunk at least 50 grand into this open cut, so we've been getting some nice material, but we're just not there yet. The main tunnels, we want to open them up, take the pillars, take the roofs, take the floors, and really empty it out properly. It's a massive gamble. The dust at the moment is out of control. We've probably got bloody 20 knots blowing in my face right now, which is about 40 k's an hour. It's blowing straight into my face as I load. Now have a look at what I've got to deal with. Paul, no and I, I cannot see a bloody thing. It's like feeding a baby with your bloody eyes closed. Ah! Hell. Whoopsie. Don't everyone come and help at once. Because it was so dusty, I kept nudging that plate, nudging that plate all day, and eventually it just gave way. <sighs> Can't leave it off because, you know, all the dirt coming down, it's going to eventually roll underneath Opalzilla, you know, underneath the belt, blocking shit up, therefore end up breaking it. You're going to need to load it. That's all right, what do you want me to stand here holding this? Just don't want it to fall on anyone. Because that'll seriously hurt. In Cooper PD. Opalzilla's protective plate has been battered off by the Blacklighter's six-ton loader. Turn it down just a smidge. Without the plate secure, dirt will jam the processing plant's belts, which supply mined rock to the black room, where ultraviolet light exposes any opal. I'll just do a little bit more here. That should hold. Pack it up, see what happens. 
It's ugly, but it works. Let's whip some colour. So with the cut, we need to get the dirt out of here to put through Opalzilla. We want to find Opal, we want to make some money. If something breaks down, we all pretty much got to stop. Oi, we got Opal in the wall here. Any good? I can't see no colour. You were a whack man. Yeah, she might lead to something. I went flying, whatever that was. I heard a crunch. Opal in Australia formed when silica-rich water from an ancient inland sea seeped through cracks and fissures into the earth and hardened in host rock over millions of years. Ooh, hear it? That's crunchy. That's Ooh. crunchy. Look at it all. Look at the colour beaming out of all the bits. Oh, we're in today, boys. We are in today. It's coated in this really stainy, like the stain from up above just keeps flowing down over the millions of years and stains the whole area. The opal's coated and you don't see it unless that breaks a bit, you know, it just hides. Opalzilla can find that little crap. I'm still in here. Oh, nice. Getting involved. What we're doing now with the open cup. I mean, you can sit there and check in the cup, but you do miss stuff. I mean, we've found a few bits that we've already missed so far. Oh, hello. Bit of golf. Something different. Oh, hang on. Hey, a bit of bellamine. Lovely. Prehistoric relative of the old calamaris or the squid, so that's the last bit that's left that filled up with opal over the, you know, probably, God knows, 100 million years ago or so. Hey, oh, that could be the other part of it. Ha-ha, <laughs> take that, bellamine. I think Opalzilla had its way with it, but if you find the right one, you could uh, do very, very well for yourself. Always looks amazing in the dark room, but until you actually get her out in the light or give her a wash, you really can't tell. Back at home base, the Blacklighters wash their opal hall in a converted cement mixer for three days. The process removes the clay from the opal and exposes the colour. You guys want to come over here and have a look at what I've sought? I've, well, I've graded it the best I can. I think the best thing we can do is get Rach in. She's up with the latest prices of what is going for what. So this is this week's finds, is it, guys? Yeah. Wow, some bloody nice colour in here. We tumbled it for three days, Rach. As you would have heard that yes, thing, I right? Heard. <laughs> you I heard, heard it going. that bloody tumbler. It was just going and going and going, wasn't it? All right. Why not? I mean, you've got a lot of nice smaller stones here, which, you know, they're cheap enough that the average Joe Blow can buy them. So they're going quite fast on the market at the moment. Yeah, and then we've got the yeah. Kingstone, quite nice and bright in colour. It just came on its own. Boom, boom. Nice, clean crystal. This parcel here is bloody nice. Yeah, that's the top. They're good size cutters, quite easy, thick bars. And then your tops here, which are just stunning. Beautiful blue-green crystal, wanted badly on the European market, for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is the, the infamous Bellamite. Bellamite. Yeah. John found both pieces. Like flipping rocks. That's a really interesting specimen, isn't it? It's nice. I reckon we should hold our heads up because it's not a should. bad score. I think you should. I think you've done all right this week, boys. Oh, yeah, I think we have. I'm a bit yeah. proud of you. Everyone's put it in this yeah, week. Yeah, bloody oath. The Blacklighters have crystal opal, including low-grade chips, large king stones and a bellamite fossil. Featuring the full spectrum of colour, it's been tumbled, with the crystal opal weighing 566 grams. Yeah, I reckon you're looking at about... Twenty-four grand, guys. I reckon. Easy. I reckon that's all right, man. Easy. That's all right. That's worth yeah. a high five, yeah. man. Well done. Well, well, well done. done. Well done. Well done. Well done, boys. Well done. Mates. Well done. But I, you know, you realise this wasn't all we found this week. Huh? Hey. Yeah. Hey. Ah. Oh. <laughs> hey. Let's hit the driving range. Let's do it. 
Oh, yeah, look at the course today. I'd watch out if you were standing out there. Oh. Finding a pocket, you know, there's not really much that can beat it, eh? It's a pretty bloody good feeling. Oh, oh. Nicely done, sir. That's way gold. Yeah, I've definitely been bitten by the opal bug. Got opal fever up here. Quite an easy fever to catch. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 24 k that's a fair amount of money to pull in for a week in anyone's books. Keeps the cobwebs out, so um, deep down, pretty happy with it. No mulligans. <laughs> 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 the misfits have suffered massive upheaval this season. i am basically step back because my health's up creek and there's not much I can do. I'm basically uh, nothing more than a, an old man. For the team to survive, mentor and financial backer Opal Joe needs rookie miner Angel and new recruit Izzy to step up. If we don't find opal, we basically don't eat. Our main target is 160, so it's still a long way to go. I'm still learning. I'm new on the machine. I've got easy spotting. The Misfits have put all their hope this season in open cut mining a single 50 by 100 metre claim. What happened there? Come have a look. I've just uncovered this tunnel. Oh, wow. A dangerous labyrinth of unstable shafts and tunnels known as drives, eight metres down. It's going to be quick. That was not good. Still holding seams of crystal opal in the ceilings and walls, worth up to $28,000 per gram. OK, we said go! My target through all of this is basically to keep my gym running. A lot of the kids can't afford gloves and headgear and mouth guards, so at the moment it's all coming out of our life savings. For your partners, you've got to be really careful who you bring on board. I don't think Izzy's got enough safety awareness about her. Not yet, you know? For me, Opal Joe is just another little hurdle I've got to get over. But how much more can I prove myself? That's the million dollar question with Opal Joe. <laughs> So we picked this spot, come along with the excavator to rip up the whole eight foot level and uh, found some old drives. Oh, let's have a look at this. Let's see how safe it is, eh? OK, just be careful. If you'd have asked me a few months back whether I'd actually be sitting in a drive, I would have told you there was no way. Even the thought of going into a mine shaft or a drive scared the hell out of me. But since I've partnered up with Angel, now, all of a sudden, the adrenaline's kicked in, and, and I'm quite happy to try things that, you know, a few months back, I would never even contemplated. How's it feeling in there? Does it look pretty safe? Yeah, it looks pretty good, actually. It's sun, is he? Yeah, I reckon we dodged a bullet there with that storm. It's dry as. The storm that shut down the Misfits operation has passed without flooding their open-cut mine. We got lucky. All the rain went around us by some miracle. You know, Mother Nature must have knew we wanted that opal. That doesn't happen all the time out here. Sometimes you get a freak storm and that's the end of the opal season. Let's find some opal. Yep. This might be our lucky bucket. It's looking that way. Yep. Look at that. Look at the colour. Oh, no way. Look at this. Angel, you're not going to believe it. You've got to get out here. Oh. Look at this. What have you found? Oh, wow. Look at the pattern. That is so pretty. Wow. That's unreal. Bloody awesome spotting. Lucky I didn't run it over with the excavator and smashed it up. So how much more do you reckon we've missed in here? Well, we've obviously gone through a pocket without knowing. Obviously. We should blacklight this area tonight because if this That's is here... That's so far away tonight. It'd be nice to be able to do it straight away, wouldn't it? It would be. I don't really want to stop work right now because we need to find Opal now. Well, I've got a bit of a harebrain idea. What's that? I've got an old block-out curtain in my car. Do you reckon if we stuck that over our heads, it'd be dark enough to actually blacklight it now? 
I reckon it's worth giving a go. Now, here's this curtain. Might work, might not. And a Mooka style. Oh, yeah, yep, I can see it's working. The UV lights are working really good. It's a really good curtain. And yeah. I'm finding a lot. I reckon we move over to the pole next to us. I reckon good ideas. Oh. That'll do it. Oh, no, I ripped it. It's right. Hang in there, curtain. I'm starting to doubt this idea. Yeah, it's pretty uncomfortable, eh? And if we're not finding, you know, we might as well... Could be a waste of time. Stop, yeah. Well, look at that. Oh, wow. Hang on. Look at that. Holy sh! it's massive. <laughs> How on earth did we miss that? How anything? did we miss that? Now, this might actually be work. We can't tell if it's got colour or not under UV. All we know is it's a form of silica, which is what ma makes it glow. I reckon we get out and have a quick look. Ooh. How's it looking? Oh, I can see purples and greens. Oh, wow. Look how thick that colour bar is. We done it. <laughs> it actually <laughs> it works. works. How it it works. Works. <laughs> You know, this is money. This is going to pay the fuel bill, buy myself equipment, and it's going to help Izzy's gym out, you know? We can't miss pieces like this. Chucking the opal in our tumbler. And we'll get all the dirt, all the rock off, you know, take some of the opal skin off just to reveal those colours. So fingers crossed there's something there that's worth a bit of money. Joe! Hey, up. Something to show you. Morning, Angel. Morning. Hi. Morning, Joe. Hey. Look at what we found. Pretty bloody good. That's for this week, eh? Yep. How many ounces is it, Angel? 8.6. Look at that. Now, that's opal. <laughs> now, you, now you're getting there. That is absolutely stunning. Even that one's stunning. <laughs> that's the piece that Izzy spotted, the kingstone. If it wasn't for Izzy, that one would have got buried. You're getting useful, Izzy. I'm trying to. That is beautiful. The misfits have a parcel of crystal opal predominantly green, blue and purple, with a kingstone featuring flashes of rare, highly prized reds. It's in the rough, weighing 244 grams. I mean, this parcel, every day of the week, bottom dollar is 8,000 on it, all right? Oh, wow. 8,000 wow. bucks. And that's a very quick sale. That's on field. That's a yeah. field price, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a good week. You girls have done really well. Absolutely awesome. I think it's impressive. All right, keep up the good work. Yeah, we'll plan to. Opal Joe's opinion of me at this point in time, I think he's slowly coming around and accepting me as a partner. He is giving me all the signs that I am doing a good job and hopefully that continues. I'm always hesitant with new people, but we're busy. I mean, her keenness is unquestionable, you know what I mean, eh? I trust her more than most for somebody I've met that's reasonably new. And she seems to have a damn good eye for Opal. Well, Nigel's looking very interested in the uh, trip this morning, isn't he? Yeah. Before, when we had Ted, Ted used to have this spot and he was always in the back. Now he's upgraded. There you that's it. Ted is Les's old dog that died, I don't know, six, seven months ago, something like that. Les and the dog were very, very close, you know, like Les lives on his own and. Go on, up you get. He's companion, I guess, has always been Titch. I had to put my dog down about eight or nine months ago. He had cancer and a big lump under his wing. Missed him a lot and, oh, well, I still miss him anyway. Ah, oh, the f***ing hoses. We're sucking from too far away. It's blocking up all the time. Our hydraulic hoses are, are too short. We need to move everything up to where we are, but really not much we can do about it. You'll do the right thing by us soon, mate. Bloody hope so. Oh, oh, what are you bellering about? Just let me have a book in that. Tickle me grandmother, lad. That's a good little bit. That's bloody big and cheesy, mate. Oh, yeah. 
Was there any more of it? I'm looking. You better have a good look through the ground, I suppose. Because there's more of it somewhere. Millions of years ago, silica-rich water from an ancient inland sea drained into the earth, filling voids in the porous bedrock and hardening to form opal. Oh! There's the other side, mate. Good work. It's right on the bloody edge. Wish we'd have got that out, Hull. I think I'll dig a bit more, Les. What do you reckon? Yeah. We've just had a little change in luck. We just started to get a little bit of nice colour. Oh! Oi, whoa, wait, wait, stop! Oh, what? We got colour up here, mate. Whereabouts? Up here. What are you doing down there, then? Well, that's where you scraped it from. I'm... Oh, we'll have a look, see what you find out. That's what we're going to do. Hey, this looks all right, Les. Yeah. I have put the digger tooth furled up there, bud. What have we got Les. here? Hey? Oh, that's not a bad piece of rock, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, look at that, Les. See if I can find some more. You beauty. Oh, here's another piece. There's <laughs> another bit. That's the same red. Red opal is extremely rare, the most valuable and highly desired by buyers. Geez, that's nice colour, Les. You beauty! And there's more of it up there. Well, that's good. We got a little bit of money here, mate. Yeah. Les! Look at that! Bloody hell, that's a ripper, that it's one, mate. It's big and it's cheesy! Oh, yeah, we need a few oh, more Oh, look at it! Oh, look at yeah. the red in the bloody thing, Les. Oh, yeah, the red's popping out <laughs> good. <laughs> you beauty! Look at it! Look how much we got! Two, two red bars in that one got. Ah, <laughs> Les! Mate, we got money. We got good yeah. money, too. Yeah. It's been a while since the old pocket's been full of colour, Les. Yes, that's a good start. Hey, that's just in time for that buyer, mate. That scraper through on the skin of our bloody teeth, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? It's a nice parcel, Les. It doesn't look too bad. It's a lot of red in it. Yeah. In Rod's camp in Grawen, the Bushmen are meeting a buyer to sell a parcel of grey-based seam opal, featuring fiery streaks of rare and highly sought-after red. In the rough, there's 45 grams. Well, we've had a good look at it. 18 grand? Asked for? Yeah. I reckon we're going to do all right with this. you got rocks in his head if you don't buy this. Yeah. <laughs> the opal buyer that we got coming, um, Steve Ravel. Here he comes. Oi, wake up. He's here. Mm hmm. He's not been around for all that long, but he's, he is a good buyer. Hello, are we, gents? How you going, mate? Good, mate. How's yeah, things? He's not a bad bloke. He seems to be pretty honest and pretty fair dink and uh, warming up a bit. No, not wrong. Summer's coming. How are you, mate? Oh, I'm good, bud. My main market's international. I buy apple pretty frequently. In this game, it's hard not to. It's a matter of survival in a lot of senses. <laughs> Please. Where'd you get the pup? Oh, I got him a few days ago. Yeah? Yeah, he's pretty cool. Where are you going? Have a look at the dog. Hmm. What do you got here? Mate, I've got an absolute bald hair of a parcel for you. Looks pretty bloody nice. Watch out the glare don't blind you coming <laughs> off that colour there, Steve. I might have to get me sonny's out of the car. Yeah, little boy, come on. Oh, you got that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice parcel, that one, mate. Absolutely <laughs> bloody beautiful. My word it is. What sort of numbers are you looking at? Reckon 18's probably a fair price. 18? I'd love to be able to say 18 all day long, but... Oh, you got that? Come on. Tell you what, 15. That's all I've got on me. Oh, I don't know, Steve. I think it's worth more than 15, mate. I mean, look at the reds and look at the colours in it. Oh, plenty of colour. But yeah, that? that that that'd be the dead set. Top of the line. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go for 15 if you chuck your puppy in for the old fella. I only just got it the other day. I can't do that. You've only had the dog a couple of days. You couldn't have fallen in love with it that much. I'll give it to the old fella. He hasn't shown any interest in the dog since his old fella died. I know, he lost him. Yeah, so... There 
right, yeah. Really? For the old boy. Good on you, Steve. Hey, Les, get the dog out of the car. Oh, right, eh? Now, mate, he's got a pretty good run on him. Pick him up. I am. Carry him over here, mate. You are a useless <laughs> old goat. He's got a bad little pup. He's a good pup, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Guess what? He's yours. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> we come to the agreement. 15 grand for the opal and the pup. Yeah, that sounds all right. What I'm going to cop this afternoon when I get home <laughs> is worth more than 15 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an opportunity there and I took it, you know. Old Les is missing his dog, you know, it's been dead for about six months now and they were so close. <laughs> and that's the first time I've ever seen the old bloke actually take an interest in another dog and he walked straight over to the dog, so I think it's going to be a good thing for the old bloke. Yeah, we miss out on a bit of money, but it's only money. Thanks, mate. No worries, Les, enjoy. He's a beautiful boy. That was really good. And the best part of the sale is when we got this as well. What did I just do wrong? Your hair broke on? Yep. I just stuffed up. I think I hit the... You hit the, the track. track. I'll just go there and have a look. Shit. The track seems all right, but I'm just hoping she has a damage to the tooth at all. Seems all right. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's good. It's just a close call. Nothing too bad. Oh, thank God for that. I'm shaking. That's what happens when you're learning. So just continue to work. Are you sure? Because I'm not overly confident at the moment. That really scared me. Yeah, but if you get off now, it's not going to help your confidence at all. So we'll just continue on. Hope we find some opal, then you'll forget about that. No worries. Well, let's keep going then. Let's get back to it. Do you want me to get closer to that wall? Yeah, if you can. But that might be your last scoop, I reckon, because your arm's fully extended almost. Yep. In Andamooka. Angel is teaching rookie miner Izzy how to operate the 25-tonne excavator so the mammoth workload can be shared. He's only just able to reach as well. I reckon that'll do it, Izzy, with the excavator. We'll get the bulldozer in. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to get Betsy running, get her down the hole, push all that dirt out. Betsy is a 50-year-old, 320-horsepower bulldozer that Angel will use to clear tons of mined dirt, which will need to be checked for opal. Now, this cut, every time I take Betsy in out, it's getting steeper and steeper. And the steeper it is, the more scary it is. Angel's a good operator, and I'm sure she'll get Betsy to do what she needs to do. Come on, Betsy. Come on, old girl. You can do it. Yeah, that was close. I didn't think Betsy was going to make it then. See anything, Izzy? Oh, it's pretty dusty. Oh, I just uncovered some blue. Oh, my God, look at it. Jelly, Jelly opal. opal. <laughs> Look how big it is. Done it. Jelly Opal, named for its translucent, gelatinous appearance, is valued by cutters for its even spread of colour and the ease in which impurities can be seen and polished away. How much more is in here? Yeah. <laughs> Could be thousands of dollars worth of opal that we can't see. Finding that stone was great, you know, like it's the first opal we've seen in quite a long time. But it's also equally as scary because I know if there's one stone, there's got to be more. I think black lighting it later might be worth doing. I reckon so, definitely. They picked up some big stones, but the stones are a little bit too big to be missing from the face. It doesn't take long to lose $100,000 or $200,000 in opal, so that gives me concerns. Start the old machine up. Hopefully she won't cause us grief. Oh, yeah. In Andamooka, the misfits are putting all their faith in ultraviolet black lights to find opal at the eight metre deep open cut mine. Everything does look more daunting at night. My heart is in my mouth right now. 
Watch it. You, go, you coming up to your speed hump here? Yeah, yeah. I can see it in your light. No, slow and steady. First, Angel needs to get the excavator into the open cut to clear mined dirt and expose the opal bearing wall. You're teetering now. I'd say you'd be pretty close there, Angel. All right, I'll take my first bite and see what happens. Yep. Just find that wall. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, I'm watching it. Do you guys want to check that wall at all? Yeah, we'll have a look. I like it when Joe looks because I know we're not going to miss anything because he's got the eye for Opal. See the glowing there? Oh, well, there's some in there as well. Yeah, that's it, Angel. That's Opal there as well. Yeah, so Joe was just pointing out some trace and I've just picked up a piece there. That's a nice trace, but yeah. that one there. I've just shone the white light on it and it's just popped yet, but this other stuff has got a different turquoisey colour, which means it's got a different body to it, so it's like that might have colour, that piece, but so far this is just potch. Potch is colourless opal and low in value, but a good indicator of ground with the potential to produce colour. In this situation, it's opal in the walls, so what's really critical is take your time, start digging it out. I've got some kind of opal. Don't know what grade it is yet. I'm just pulling out the seam, picking up all the glowy pieces and chucking them in my pocket. Oh, look at that. Awesome. That's a scene. <laughs> That's bloody cool. awesome, is he? Once you see Opal, you can't unsee it. <laughs> and this is awesome. This literally could be a $100,000 pocket, $200,000 pocket. Might be a few hours to dig it all out, but it'd be worth it. You know, good for our spirits. You've done well. Good job. <laughs> cool. He's looking busy. He is looking busy. Hurry up. Morning, Joe. Morning. That's Come from last to night. Show you last night's efforts. Hey. Cool bananas. After an exhausting 4 a.m. finish, the misfits are ready to appraise the opal from their night shift. I chucked it in the tumbler last night. So, oh, well, that's pretty. It is. Hey, that's not bad. Not bad for a night shift. Awesome. That's a nice one. Look at the sparkles on that. There's one really good one in there. You'll see it in a minute. Oh, this is crystal. Definitely the kingstone. Crystal of the opal. Place. It's definitely the kingstone of this three ounces. Very nice. It's very electric, eh? Holy shit. Actually, that's nice as well. The misfits have jelly and crystal opal with an intense rainbow spread of colour. It's been tumbled and there's 85 grams. So how much do you reckon it's worth? Uh, from what I'm looking at here, you say 3,000 ounces, say nine grand. Yeah? Yeah, awesome. nine grand. Wow. I mean, that one on its own is 1,500, 2,000. We're slowly getting to our target. Yes, yeah, slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah, no, the bottom dollar will be nine grand on it. That was our first night dig. Good plan, Izzy, thinking outside the box. Angel, you done well. So, it's been an awesome night. Good day, have the rest of the afternoon off. Cheers. 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 Yeah, I might even have a nana nap, eh? <laughs> Sounds like a plan, I need to rest oh. the back. We're pushing the envelope working um, this, this late into the season. At this time of year, everyone else has left. It's too hot. We're up around 40 degrees Celsius. In no time at all, we're going to be looking at 50 degrees. My concern is that the weather is going to beat us before we find the opal that we need. We're literally running against the clock now. We're about a third to our season's target, which is 150,000. We've only got 50. So 100 grand, um, we, need to, we need to stay through summer. But it's ludicrous mining in this heat. We need to get our act together. We need to find opal. The Andreu family is steeped in opal. Their parents raised their children in the industry 
and the siblings have now taken up the mantle. Isaac as an opal cutter and polisher and Sophia in retail at her high-end opal store. Our main motivating driving force for Isaac and I have been to get back into the outback, just like our parents once upon a time, and to do them proud doing just as they did, to really be with the land, to be finding the opal, and to take it back to our customers. That's our family legacy, and we're actively doing our very best to continue that. On their Yawa house claim, Sophia and Isaac are hunting rare Yawa nuts. Ironstone boulders filled with unique opal patterns only found in this part of the world. More and more people from all around the world are learning about this incredible opal. So the demand is the highest that it's ever been. The customers are there, they're rolling in and they're ready to spend. We need to find that opal so that we can raise that money to buy the machinery that we need. We've got one jackhammer and a bunch of hand tools. Our ultimate goal is to own our own excavator. First bit of colour of the It's in the trench again. The trench of all places, Sophia. It's my fault. It's hard enough to find opal and finally find some and Sophia threw it up to me. It's a good throw, bad catch. I've been in that trench before, I'm not going in again. We'll wait for it to dry out, and then we'll just look for it then. OK. Let's track on. We need to find twice as much opal now. What was it tied to? Did it break, or it was tied to the strap, and the strap's tied to the tree. Isaac, how are we going to get out of here? Uh... Sophia and Isaac are trapped at the bottom of their eight-metre-deep open-cut mine in crippling 40-degree temperatures. Well, Ken, this is desperate because we've got no water down here. Both the water bottles are empty. We've taken the steps out. You reckon you can make it up there? It's not the easiest place. Maybe through here? Just be ready to catch me. Yeah, just concentrate on what you're doing, babe. Oh, no! Get footholds, yeah? Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> you right? Oh. You're nearly at the top. Just be careful at the top. Yeah. Hey, listen. <sighs> See if you can tie a better knot this time. <laughs> I thought for a minute that we, we weren't going to get out of here, eh? OK, we're all good this time. Well done, Sophia. Power's back on. Ironstone. Colour? Definitely no, ironstone. No colour. Check that. This looks good. There is colour in that. <gasps> yeah, that's purple. All right, awesome. Well, there has to be more, right? Hold on. There, there. I saw something for sure. There's nothing in that. <laughs> hey! <laughs> colour. Oh, this heat. We've got to check all of these. Hey, 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 hey. Look at this. I love colour. Oh, <laughs> here come the goosebumps. <laughs> That's beautiful. Mum and Dad would love this. Uh, this is the legacy, baby. Look at this. Look at the colour. I wish they were here right now. We are now in the Whit Sundays at my beautiful shop. Our store, we um, have a really special thing that we do. Sponsor young adults to help them to get into business. We sponsor Monique as a jewellery artist in the store. She's a lovely girl that I worked with over 10 years ago as her disability support worker. She's a brilliant upcoming jewellery artist. And she also happens to deal with disabilities like cerebral palsy and autism. The jewellery that I make is a lot like myself. There's only one of it in the world and will ever be in this world. 
What I love about Opal is that it's inspiring, beautiful. It is not like anything that anyone has ever seen before or ever will. So I'll give you a moment to check it out and see how you feel. I thought it would suit what you do perfectly because everything that you create is so unique. What about this one? No, I don't like it. You don't like this one? No. Wait, you don't like the colours or, or something? No. Really? Um, wh what about this one? It's beautiful. What do you think of this? No. Not this one either? No. I love that. You love this one? Yes. Well, I love this one. This is actually one of my favourites. Yes. I love this one. Okay. That one. Great. And this one. Great. And that one. Great. Great. I'm very relieved to say that Monique absolutely loved the opals that we brought home. There was a few that she actually didn't like at all. And I was getting quite nervous that she was going to reject a lot. Um, so really positive outcome. She loved almost all of them. Monique will be working with Yawa Nut Opal of deep blues and greens. They've been cut and polished, ready to be fashioned into 25 pieces of jewellery. These are beautiful. We're going to have some pieces that range from anywhere between $250 to $650 each. With enough customer support, we're looking at just over $11,000. I just got a call from Sophia. The jeweler's happy. I nailed it. You need to be able to look at that rock, follow the lines that nature's given you, and be able to work out how to bring the best of it out. It's incredible what you'll see if you really look. You just have to open your eyes, and Opal will do that for you. Everything we, um, we've got out here, we have to make it ourselves. We, you can't just go and buy it anywhere. So we've just had you know, a couple holes wear in the, the top of the blow pipe. Dad's fabricated a new one. Yeah, perfect. Let's get back to mining. Awesome. It's clean too. Oh. Is it trying to go purple or is that just me being blind? Uh, yeah, I can see that a bit. That's good. That's awesome. Big, big knobby up there or a big bit of seam or something. In their blower claim, Chris and daughter Luca have spotted an opal scene. Jet black. We've got some material there. All that we need is the colour now. Oh, well, hopefully it'll come through and tail out. If you're going to be an able miner, you've got to be prepared to put money up and prospect. You know, you've only got to have a look at the year we had last year. I think we had a $40,000 fuel bill, and that's just the fuel bill. We've started a website, you know. We're, we're doing custom jewellery for people. But if we didn't put the hard yards in last year, we wouldn't have had the, the year we did this year. Oscar. Yo. Let's go, mate. Yeah, I'm good to go. Rory be waiting for us. We wanna, I want to try and get this load in. Their eight-ton truck is now full with opal-bearing dirt. We decided just to leave Rory at the wash plant, cover all our bases, basically, and if there was a problem there, he could shut it down quickly um, without it turning into a major problem. The Chiels need to traverse 40 kilometres of boggy roads to reach the wash plant. Basically, want to just get this load to town if we can get through. And Rory's back there. We want to show him the trace that we gouged out. Rain looks like it's stopped, but it's pretty wet. <laughs> We're bogged now. And she's a bit soft because of all the rain, so and she's just gone down the back there. See. It's a four-wheel drive truck. Hey, kids. 
Yeah. You want to grab some um, timber, whatever you can, and we'll jam under that wheel. The Chiel's four-wheel drive truck, loaded down with eight tonnes of opal-bearing dirt, is bogged in soft sand, 25 kilometres from their wash plant. I'll try and back out. That was close. I didn't think we were getting out of there. With more rain forecast, now the rush is on to get the opal dirt into their wash plant agitator. You need your agitator, especially digging knobby country, because you've got to wash everything. You don't see it all underground. A tiny little stone can be worth, you know, 100 grand. It goes up in there, we mix water with it, turns into a mud and then washes the silver waste, and then you're just left with your real hard tailings in there. Yeah, Rory's gonna stay back here at the, at the wash plant. You know, it's time for you to step up now and be responsible for, for this whole setup in town, the faith in him. Chance at all of, um... Hey! Just with the extra weight, perfect example of, um, when he gets sidetracked like that, he's always got to be looking at Mossy. Yeah, a little, little bit of pressure on my shoulders. Um, you know, I'll be out here by myself, running all the machinery, running the algae. A um, little bit nerve-wracking. Rory, in his first shift as an agitator operator, needs to ensure eight tonnes of opal-bearing dirt is washed for 24 hours. Hey, mate. How's it going? Good. You right to go? Yeah, boy. You ready to sail out? Yeah. It's going strong. Water seems like it's coming out all right. The Chiels are hunting nobbies, small solid balls of opal, the most valuable rare red on a black base, worth up to $49,000 a gram. Yeah, the reason this tail out's important because it's, you know, it's in a new area, a new claim. You know, I'm hoping that there's some material in there and, and, and at least even an indicator to keep keep digging there. Fingers crossed. I got some nice, beautiful black knobbies. Just no colour in No colour in them. A little bit disappointing. Yeah, bit of a shame. Now, obviously, knobbies are great. Like, it's a good sign, but you don't get paid unless you get colour. Oh, I think this would be the worst we've had this season. You know, and, and times like these where you don't get an you you appreciate how rare over it. Yeah, this is a bit of a reality check for us today, to be honest. The Chiels have found potch, low value, predominantly colourless opal. If there's any piece here that's that's convinced me to keep going, it's that piece there. And that's because there's flashes of red in there and, and it's sitting on that black potch. And with that sort of colour there, well, you definitely got to keep going. Back at home base, a glimmer of hope. Right. Hey, Mike. Hey, Danielle. How are you guys? Good. Hey, thanks. How are you? It's good. A buyer is interested in a ring from the Chiel's website for $9,000. I was just a bit worried without seeing it in the flesh. Is it, it hasn't been photoshopped or doctored in any way. So all the photos are taken on a macro lens, um, just in nice, even light. And we don't um, like photoshop them or edit them or enhance them whatsoever. It's for a 20th, uh, our 20th wedding anniversary, and it's hard when you buy over the net, especially something like that. But I... So is it, um, is it a black? Oh. Yeah, we found it in our laminate claim. It's a lot of money. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Lovely. Well, we'll, um, we'll package that up to you and get it sent to you as soon as possible. I'm sure you'll love it. It's a beautiful little piece. I'm sure you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? We've just got, we've just nailed that last step. First jewelry sale. Yeah, <laughs> good. Perfect. How good is that? Proud of you. Absolutely perfect. Proud of you, kids. Oh, great.
Well, that, that's the thing with the, the website is like, you know, even if we don't get open for the week, there's always that backup. It's cool to see how excited they were too. Hey, like, yeah. she, she couldn't stop smiling. Yeah. So. Sophia and Isaac have bought a claim. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Sitting on major opal bearing fault lines. The 100 year old Jojo Run, an area famous for ironstone yawa nuts. Roughly one in 1,000 will have valuable opal inside. We need this new mine to pay a shitload because this season hasn't been that good. We're about a third of the way up to our season's target. Once in a generation flooding across Australia has cut off major roads throughout the outback meaning Sophia can't return from her opal shop in Airlie Beach, 1,300 kilometres away. We need opal. Uh, if we don't find it, we won't get big machines, we won't be able to continue mining, and we're not in this to, to fail. We're, we're here to find opal. Yep, just go straight ahead, just go below the ironstone band. Oh, yeah. Just wedge it. That's okay. it. Got it. Okay. What do we got? Is it a boy or a girl? Look at this. <laughs> oh, I put on to something. Oh, mate, the rest of it's up there. Have a look at that. Oh, <laughs> there's a rainbow up there, mate. Oh, what the hell? Oh, holy shit. Far out. <laughs> Come on, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pull the jack away, we can do this by hand. <sighs> just, just leave it there, eh? You like an artwork? Yeah, we'll just cut For down. a caveman? Yeah, we'll put a frame around it and we'll just turn it into a gallery. <laughs> oh, it is too hard, mate. We'll just use the hand pick until <sighs> you get a lever over the top okay. there. It was, there was movement before, that's why it got you to stop. Yeah, no, just oh. what I mean, see? Got, stop, stop, stop. Okay. If she blows. Hey! Oh, hello. I'm your daddy. There's some colour here. Is there? No, it needs to come out. It properly know. doesn't it, yeah. So we'll have to work under it. There is those little floater nuts. Why don't we just pick them out? Because they could okay. have anything in them. Yeah, sure. I'm going to get that one out with my hands. <laughs> it's a yellow nut that is floating between the layers of boulder ironstone, opal, and the clay. Sometimes that'll have a cavity in it that'll fill up with a beautiful crystal opal. All right, mate. Good on you, man. Best day. Thanks, mate. I, I really hope that these rocks here, these opal boulders, will provide the opal that I need to list on the Opal Whisperers website. Back at his base camp, Isaac is preparing to work on 20 kilograms of yawa nuts and boulder opal, mined from his new claim. Nothing really. Just a he needs to make a series of cuts using a diamond tip blade in a process known as blocking, hoping to expose opal colour. When you're blocking out opal, uh, you don't see the magic straight away. This is the one that's got the red flash in it. So hopefully that red orange colour is pulled inside. Only one way to find out, cut it through the guts, mate. Can I please have a $50,000 red on black? Crystal Centre, come on, baby. Nearly all up. I've got the nuts left, and that's it. Them empty nuts, mate. Bloody disaster. Two nuts left. I've done a one hundred and ten dollar saw blade. I've done thousands of dollars on the bloody find the mine itself. What is that? <laughs> You're kidding me, what is that? <laughs> oh, that's the best nut I've ever seen, mate. Yes! That's black opal, mate. That's a black opal yawa nut of the highest quality. Half of it's black opal, look at it. I've always got my eye out for that special stone. Uh, right. That'll go into the perfect bit of wood. I have been making art for about five years. That's a beautiful stone. And I've kept it a little bit in the closet. This is a burl off a tree. So when a tree has an injury, 
like we create a scar, uh, a tree will actually create a burl. So it's like a little bubble on the tree where it's been injured. This is my version of a dentist short set Dremel. So this is a sanding bit for wood. I'm following the natural lines. I'm not changing much, but just sort of like enhancing whatever's there already. A certain romance in handmade one-off pieces. When you're an opal miner, it's rough and it's tough, but when you get the chance to sit down with a beautiful yawana, nature starts to talk to you, it whispers to you. Maybe it fits in there quite nice. Well, oh, it does fit in there quite nice. Got to fit them and fiddle around a bit, but I like that. Isaac has created a wood sculpture featuring both halves of a crystal yawa nut. It's blue-green with flecks of yellow and pink. The nut has been polished and weighs roughly 20 grams. I'll do a little video of this one, actually. Oh, look at the red in that. Isaac has put the piece online with an asking price of $12,000. And it's not long before he gets a bite from a regular buyer. Good day, man. How you doing? Hey, Andrew. I just put this on full screen so I can see it probably. Hold on. There we go. What do I owe the pleasure of your call today? Today, I've noticed on your website here that uh, you put up some, some new artwork. You see it there? Oh, man. That's a, a, a very beautiful stone. Got all the colors in there. Here's the thing. I'm hoping that maybe we could try to work out some wholesale pricing, you know, as, as per usual. I don't know, Andrew. Um, I think the price is pretty firm. At the same time, I'd really love you to have it. And I know how much you love Opal, mate. You're like me, you freak out when you see color like that. Is there anything else I can... Well, um, how about some rough stones with that? If I can achieve the $12,000 on this artwork, I'd be more than happy to put a few in the parcel there and I'll make sure they're bangers. How does that sound? That's why I always keep coming back, my friend. Good on you, Rod. I'd love to shake hands with you, but... <laughs> <laughs> How's the drive? Watery. Roads are all right? Uh, mostly blogs. How'd you yeah. go? I made a beautiful piece of opal art with this gorgeous crystal center that, that we found, Eddie and I, okay. and I sold it for $12,000, really? my artwork, yes, Your on own the website. Artwork? Yes. I'm very excited. I've always known he's had this amazing potential, so I'm very, very proud of him. What we want to do is uh, spread this pile as flat as a pancake, get it nice and thin, and bring it in some black lights later. The more he spreads it out, the more surface that we're going to have to go over with the black lights, the more chance of finding this opal. Holy shit, hold on, bro, hold on, hey! What the hell are you blokes buddy doing? Are you dropping me bloody claim? No, we come and pegged it last night. The business of the night, we got this claim here, and we got a slip gun through there, we haven't pegged it yet. Right, taking bloody million dollars off me. No, nah, look, we're not going your claim. We're bloody not claim. Yet. Yeah, we pegged up last night, mate. Sorry, I thought we might give you a bit of a surprise this morning. You did, yeah, mate. Yeah, bloody hell. Sorry, mate. Yeah, look, we're just here to get this pile, man. That's all. We're uh, not okay. digging, we're not going down. So we'll stay well off all your working. All uh, right, okay then. Bloody hell. You could have been a fortune here, mate. Sorry about that, Bogo. Uh, I was a bit worried there. They could have jumped out with a bat and could have been on for young and old. This is the way it goes in the opal fields. Everyone's a little bit uh, worried if you peg up next to them. Surrounded by active mines, the Mooka boys are banking on a new claim which still holds piles of opal bearing dirt. Just looking at what he's pushed over, hoping to find something. A little bit of trace, a little bit of colour, a little bit of anything would be good. Out here in the desert, gets a little bit lean in between uh, finds. I've got two young kids and the missus at home. They all rely on me to find some opal. It gets quite hard to keep the family fed and everybody happy. I'm looking for anything that shines up like opal. 
Gotta hit them to crack them open so you can see what's on the inside of them. Got the blokes that are finding colour just over there. That's where all this dirt came from, down in that hole. We dug it out. If they're finding colour there, we should be finding colour here. We've been pushing all day, so it would have been good to see some by now. We've got the pile spread pretty thin. Nothing. That should have been one. This is a high intensity UV black light spotlight. We're going to get it up nice and high. And and it can actually throw a black light a good 10 metres away from it. Trying to get as big a spread on the floor as we can, so better chance of finding this opal. We've all got bills to pay, we've all got families to feed. So, yeah, if there's no opal, then this dream ends. Uh, this is a um, fluorescent tube UV light. These are the same ones that we use in the um, noodling black light rooms. The more black light, the merrier. So we're just going to chuck the generator in a bucket, and that's going to power all these lights. All right, that's on, that's on. Yep. Yours working? Yeah, it's working. I just turned it off. Awesome, bro. Yeah, you're going good good day. Day. Woo! All right, Matty, you ready? Yeah, man. Let's see as you go. Yes, yeah, so it seems to work the way we wanted it to. We're getting a nice, decent spread. I'm just walking around in the middle of the spread, having a look for the opal as he's backing up and driving forward. So we haven't had much luck just yet. Go forward. Yeah, mate. We've uh, done a few passes. Uh, Black Rhinosaurus, because he's out front there having a look. Picking up a few bits and pieces, but not too much so far. No big winners yet. Hey! Oh, yeah. Hey, hey! Found something. What we got? Got good sized material here in the window, oh. man. Yeah, hey, hey! I knew there was over here. Yeah. Oh, man. Got to be stoked about that, man. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, I'll go and grab that bucket. Yeah, I need a bucket, man. There's heaps here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, colour. We'll have a look under some light, and we'll see if they've got any good colour in it. Opal has a bit of a bad habit of uh, becoming smaller and less brighter by the next day. So uh, we don't like uh, count our chickens until they've come home to roost. So. We'll take this stuff home, uh, give it a good clean up, and then we'll definitely be able to see what we've got, man. This is a bit of coloured concrete opal that we only find here in Anamooka. A limestone-based rock with uh, opal infused inside the pores. They look quite dry and chalky, but once we treat them, they can come up with a really nice colour. We've got some really big chunks here, so we just got a couple of the smaller ones that broke off. We'll give them a good test. Matt and Koza, working without team leader Leif, are about to cook a batch of concrete opal discovered on their new claim. We generally make up a sugar solution, kind of one-to-one -one sugar to water. Uh, we let our pieces soak in uh, that water while it's heated up to just under boiling temperature for at least half an hour, and then put them into the sulfuric acid for about 15 minutes, half an hour. It is a bit of a risky process. It can really burn your skin, cause you some serious injuries, but we think it's worth it. All right, well, the yes, is nice and warm, just under boiling temperature. Drop them in, man, see what we can do. There's a few things that can go wrong here. We can overheat the stones. If we heat them too much, they'll expand and actually crack in places. And uh, if we were to mix the acid with the water, the acid actually instantly boils that water. If it's in a bit of a container, that water and acid can shoot straight up in your face. All right, well, have a look. Let's have a gaze, eh? Right? <laughs> Been about 40 minutes, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, it's not bad. Ooh, come on, dark. That's looking good. Let's give it a quick flush here. Make sure we get every last bit of that acid off. OK. It's not bad. Look at that colour. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Look at that. Got some big broad flash. 
with some green pinfire baits under it. That's killer. Or black lightosaurus worked well. The Mooka Boys have concrete and seam opal, featuring the full spectrum of colours. Treated and in the rough, it weighs 15 kilos in total. It's pretty good material, cos. I reckon yeah. we're going to get close to a top grade price. Yeah. And we've got 15 kilos sitting there, 15 so... 15 kilos. I'm happy to put a 1,000 bucks a kilo on this all day long. 15 grand? 15 grand. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think Leif will be happy with that, mate. Yeah, <sighs> definitely, man. Yeah, we're running out of season now, and we've got a long way to go on our season target, so we're going to keep pushing on. Next for the Mooka Boys mining team, keep working and let's find Opal. Yeah, hopefully get rich. <laughs> the Mooka Boys, brothers Matt and Cosa Cathigan, and team leader Leif Tanza have reached season end as brutal summer temperatures and extreme humidity engulf the town of Andamooka. Oh, this is my diary, or my version of the Opal Bible that I've been sort of keeping tabs on and um, different spots and things we do. Team leader Leif is making a last ditch attempt to find an Opal producing mine, leaving Matt and Cosa to pick over the remains of ground that's been worked for decades. Yeah, it's been a tough year out here in the desert. We've had a fair few breakdowns, you know, and uh, the weather's not really letting up on us. Every claim that we've got's been flooded out. I think the next generation after us is a pretty important thing. All the old fellows are saying now that bloody, you know, it's a dying, it's a dying industry and that, and there's not a lot of sort of younger people interested. But in some sort of reality, you know, we are some of the last ones. The Mooka boys want to honour Leif's late father's legacy by becoming successful opal miners in their own right and passing the baton on to their children. This year, I got some uh, good news at the start of the season, and I've actually got a baby on the way. Which, uh, I was the last one to not have a family at the moment. So that's why we're out here every day, just grinding and pushing as hard as we can. Certainly our dream, and it'd be nice if it was the, it could be a dream for the kids as well. But we're running out of season, and it looks like we've got a whole lot more weather coming our way, so we don't have much more of a chance this year. Yeah, it's time to call it, I think. Not even a cup full of opal out of it. Oh, freaking hell, we boots full of mud and water. We're done with this hole this year. It's only gonna get worse. Done. Let's get out of here, man. It's called life. Oh. 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 God, man. You all right? Pick just slipped and copped me in the head. Bad? Are getting good? Yeah, man, you got a big split on the top of your head. Oh, sh Oh, it is good. I don't know, you might need a stitch. I'm definitely done, then. Hey, Cozzy. Yeah, bro? The Leif's ears are burning or he's got a spy camera on us, but he just sent us a text. Yeah, right, eh? What'd he say? Pack up at Horse Paddock, boys. Head on over to Stevens. I've got a surprise for you. All right. That worked out well. Yeah, well, you're going to get cleaned up, then, and we'll go and see him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate. Oi. Yeah, what's his surprise? Bill said to catch up with you guys, come up here and then give him a call. He's got some news for us. Yeah, right. All right, here we go. Mr. Bill is an old family friend. He's pretty much like a father to me since Dad's passed on. And they just sort of always yeah, looked out for me after the old boy left off. How you going, mate? Mr. Bill, how are you? Good. How you going, Bill? How you going, Bill? Yeah, we're up here at Stevens, and you were saying there was something you wanted to tell us about the place and that. Okay, well, you know, that claim's there. I'm working for the down, so I'd like your boys to, to have a go at it. Yep. And uh, I want you boys to get some open at it. No, that, that'd be awesome. That's greatly appreciated. Yeah, thanks, uh, man. Thank, thank, you, thank you, That's awesome, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. All right, we'll talk soon. Oh, yeah. All right, boys, awesome, mate. Hey, this might change our luck, eh? We might have a bit of luck for you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bill's claim, last chance, has not been mined for over a decade. The opal level lies 20 metres deep in a vast network of crumbling tunnels. And to help them out, Mr. Bill has allowed the Mooka boys to sell any opal they find. Took the big bit of wall down here and got dusted out. Did I leave my pump rope on a dash rag? Like, my ass for kicking in. I'll go have a look. <sighs> oh, in the final days of the season, Matt Cathigan is struggling with excess dust in a mine unworked for over 10 years. Matt, he's having an asthma attack down there, I think. He's dropped a bit of oil and he's got it. I've got it here, mate. I'm going to drop it. 
Yeah, drop it down, man. Hey. Oh. Oh. No, it hasn't happened before down the hole. I, I've seen him younger. He had a few asthma attacks, but um, yeah, he has got asthma, and it's something that we really need to worry about. Yeah, I don't want to get stuck down here, so I think I might get yeah. out, man. I'll swap over because of you. Yeah, don't risk it, man. Bloody hell, bruv. I want to find that eye for you. It's good here somewhere. All right, right to come up, Matty. All right, mine out the hole. See yous. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Oh, shit, it's stale there, man. It's stale down here? Oh, no. We swap Maddie and Cosa out. The air quality, because it's quite moist, the air's like real sort of thick and dense. That can be quite an issue without fresh air coming down. I feel the whole lot, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Up under here. It's only thin, but look. Oh, oh, yeah. It's in the concrete everywhere. Here, 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 here. Yep. Look at it all through it. Right. You see the colour of concrete here, and that? there's made a bit of crystal underneath here, so you could go up into the concrete and make a crystal ball or just sit on top of the level as well. I thought we'll undergouge it a bit and just get the jackhammer back up in here and drop the level. Yeah, lucky Matty's not down here with all this dust. Is he all right? How's he going? Yeah, no, he's all right, man. He'll just chill out up there. Stay on the winch controls for now. We'll get a bit more airflow down here before he comes back down. Yeah. This, this big band of concrete's going all the way back in, so pretty much what we'll do is take this corner out. Hopefully they don't fall on our head. Ha! Woo! Look at that, bro, red flashing that. Oh, yeah, that's colour. Nice bit of red flash through that top piece. See that broad flash in there? Definitely got colour in this material. Oh, yeah, I'll throw these in that bucket. Yeah. Here goes. These walls are f***ed, eh? Hey! The whole place is coming down. Man, <laughs> this is just crumbling in down here, bro. Ah, I'm out. Ready? There you go. Yeah, let it go. Oh. Now, what do you reckon we call it quits? We get out of here for the day? Yep. Bit of a close call down there. All the ledges have dried out, had a little bit of water, and now they've dried out and turned into crumbly stuff. So, yeah, every bit, bit of, that we're touching just starts to fall down. All right, we found a bit of material, which is good. Yeah, got a few buckets to take up, you know. Still well below their season target. The Mooka Boys' final opal haul for the season is ready to be valued. You going for that material as we're bringing it out? Mate, we've bought up heaps. Come over here, have a look. Yeah. We've, uh, mate, there's well over 100 kilos here. Most of this material is green blue stuff. It's, it's better than medium grade. 600 yeah. bucks a kilo all day long. The Mooka Boys have concrete opal ready for an acid treatment to enhance the blue green colour in the host rock. It's in the rough, and there's 100 kilograms. So 100 kilos of sellable stuff, <laughs> 600 a kilo. $60,000. Oh, oh! <laughs> yeah, boys! In the flood-devastated outback, the Bushmen, Rod Manning and Les Walsh have limped through a season of failure. Uh, that's cracked. First hole, Manny, first hole! Trial member Ben Moses has failed his probation period. Young Benny, he probably found it a little bit tough, so he's trying to do a few other things, and um, he's a good bloke, but he's just not a bushman. And newest member Ty Gross has been called away on a family emergency, leaving Rod and Les to work one last mine. Ding dong. Ah, oh, the f***ing hoses. We're sucking from too far away and it's blocking up all the time. We need to move everything up to where we are. We're way behind on our season total. Our best chance of finding big money's here because this is a black opal area. Black opal, the rarest in the world, is renowned for vibrant colour on a black base. It can be worth up to $49,000 a gram. To get a big hit and make some serious money, we need some black. So this is where we go. We just have to keep buddy shipped and dirt, you know. 
Don't ship dirt, you don't find opal. If you don't find opal, you got no money. The Bushman's blower, a giant vacuum, has struggled to shift sodden waste dirt from the mine through the 37 metres of pipe. Rod and Les need to drill a new shaft to reduce the pipe distance and increase suction power. X marks the spot. Move the drill above where we want to put it down and hopefully we'll bust through where that dot is on the seal and not over the top of the digger. In parts of Grawan lie extremely hard layers of silcrete, sand and gravel cemented together by dissolved silica. We've not drilled here before, so we don't know whether the ground's really hard or not. The Bushman's 40-year-old exploration rig needs to penetrate this highly resistant layer with the auger drill before it can reach the mine 10 metres below. That's our last hope. If we can't get the pipes down here, what do we do? Got no choice. Got to go through. What's that? See that? What? A bolt fell out? Where from, do you know? Up there. Oh. Never ends. This never ends. A vital pin on the Bushman's auger drill has shaken loose. Without the pin, the Bushmen have no hope of completing the new blower pipe shaft for their mine. We need to get you to go up there, push the auger in as I lower that head down. Don't drop the hammer on me. No. As a former rigger climbing agricultural infrastructure, Les has over 30 years of experience working from heights. Hold it! Lift it up a bit, hey? Lift it up a bit! <laughs> Was that loose, you reckon? No. All right. That's it. You got him. Yep, she's in. Thanks, Les. Geez, that's wet. Yep. So what have we got to do, Rod? I'm going to have to come over this side a little bit. The Bushman's four-ton super digger needs to be manhandled across unstable ground to reach an opal-bearing mine face. Yeah, I might be able to make that work, Les. Finally digging. It's been an awful long time getting to this stage. Yeah, she's starting to get a bit of, bit of trace in here. There's a bit of jammy stuff, Rod. Bit of trace in there. Coming along back this way. There's a bit of green there. That's starting to develop all right, Tony. Yeah. We might just have a bit of a jackhammer look, eh? Yeah. Tell you what, Ty, that's looking all right, mate. Yeah, look at that. It's starting to get a bit jammy. That's getting jammy. We just might have a couple of dollars here. It's not looking too bad. The way things are going at the moment, we don't want to miss a bloody thing. Oh, there's colour in this lot. It's red in that. Yeah. Look at that, up the top. Green. Greens and reds. That's our stone. Hang on. Hang on. We just had a bit of movement. I noticed the line fall out of the roof. It's just one of those things, you know, like after 100 years of doing this, you just notice little things. What do we got, Rod? Oh, I just heard a bit of noise. We had a band of little pieces falling out of the roof. We just opened up a fairly big area here. So let's get out of here, Ty. I'm hearing you. With only a meagre hall dug from a now unsafe mine, Rod wants to rub what they found, increasing its value. But the delicate process also risks destroying the opal. We sell our jam in carrots, which is a weight. So you want to try and keep them as heavy as you possibly can. They've got to look as best that they can and still be as heavy as they can. Nice colour there, but he's got too much sand in him. One swipe on a wheel can take off five, six, seven hundred dollars. Nah, won't face. The colour bar's too thin. I'll just go straight through it. So that one's a no-go. 
I'll have a quick look at this last one to see whether it's going to do anything. If this hasn't got something in it, then it's a bust for us. We've made absolutely nothing, because the rest of it ain't much chopped. So, here we go. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at this. Pickle me, grandmother, that's bloody beautiful. Who'd have thought that was in that piece of bloody ordinary looking rough? Oh, Les will be beside himself when he sees this. The Bushmen have an exquisite rare black opal, featuring the full spectrum of colours. It's been partially rubbed, weighing 1.3 grams. Hey, Ty, Les. Yeah. Come over here, boys. What do you got? Stick your hand out. Oh, shit, that's all right. So that was the black piece? That was the black one. Unreal. That's a bloody ripper. Nice piece of stone, that. Yeah, it's bloody got some colour in it. Well, we ought to weigh it. Here we go. <laughs> what is he? 6.5. What do we reckon we'll get for that a carrot? It's got to oh. be 1,500, two grand. Easy. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I'd go two grand, Toy. Two grand a carrot? 12K. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That sounds better. 12 grand. That sounds good. Stones with that much red in them on black don't come around all that often, do they? Rod and Les's last hope rests on finding a pocket of crystal opal in the final weeks of the season, worth up to $28,000 a gram. Things are getting a bit desperate, and uh, we're nowhere near where we need to be. Me and the old fella, we just got to keep cracking on. That's all you can do. Just keep trying to rock it backwards and forwards, Liz. Yeah, it gets a bit of a grip, it might. Hey, Liz! Oh, well, that worked. You beauty! That worked. We've got to get this off, mate, and get back mine, and this season's fast coming to an end. You know, with us, we live here all year round. We're here through that horrible heat in summer, you know, 48 degree days and uh, we do like to have a break. We'll try and put some dirt in these wheel tracks. That'll give us traction on our back wheel to get out. Most of the miners aren't working at the moment because of the weather, and it's getting late in the season, you know? It's only the blokes with no friggin' brain stayed here, but we just can't quit. That'll do all those buggers. You all right? Yeah, uh, bloody hips playing up a bit this morning. Yeah, I'll be all right when I straighten up, lovely. For the look of it, my requirement's a fair way off yet. I was hoping it's going to be by summertime, but I can't see anything happening. Back me in, Les. Yeah, that dirt hopefully will stop us from getting bogged. Hello! Right, no, let's do this. I just got a boot full of water. Holy ghost. Hey, Les, crikey, have a look at this. This, what's, that's five, four or five metres deep, isn't it, Les? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, around here, look. We can go swimming down here. Come in the last few days. I don't like water in an opal mine, Les. This is a, a clay level, and clay, when it gets wet, it starts falling out of your walls. Once the walls start going like that, they'd start collapsing. We don't want this rising anymore. No. Water and opal dirt don't mix. We need to pump this out, Les, or we're going to be in strife here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to lift the top off this shaft, Les. Be careful. Yeah, well, don't you go for a swim either. See this mud? This was really solid floor before, and then once the water hits it, it goes like this. And that's exactly what the walls do. Once the walls start going like that, they'd start collapsing. All right, Les, fire up. To stop their opal mine from collapsing. You working? Yeah. The Bushmen have to pump water out of a four metre deep sump hole. Gonna wait a few hours and see how much he sucks out. So now we've got this organised, I think we'll probably go and do a bit of digging. All right, let's get back to work. 
But we've had so much rain, you know, the ground just up the top is just so waterlogged. Just need to be very, very cautious of this water up here. I've felt pressure for the last few seasons trying to find opal so that Les can have a decent retirement. And every year we just haven't hit our targets. We haven't done what we need to do. A little bit on the hard side there, Les. It is a bit. It is a bit. Nothing there, is there? Oh, we've got a bit of green there. I'll pry it out, mate, but... Oh, here's one bit. Here's one bit. Oh, <laughs> get in there, Les. Look at it. Get that a nice piece of rock, Dad. There's got to be more here. Well, you would hope so. Oh, oh. Well, you get some, Les? Yeah. So what's that, two pieces? Yeah. Well, that's all right. Well, just make sure there's nothing else there. Oh, Les, look at this. Here's another bit. We've got another bit, Ron. Another bit. Have a look at this stuff. Oh. <laughs> hey? Something for Amanda to put on the website. <laughs> that's it. Yes, that's true. For some time now, you know, Amanda's had this idea with cutting out the middlemen, you know, instead of taking all our opal to town, selling them to buyers, that we sell them on a website. It worried me that they weren't going to move with the times, and then once I explained, we cut out the buyers, Rod and Les and Ty were just really happy with that. To maximise the opal value, Rod grinds off any excess sandstone and imperfections to expose the band of colour underneath. Oh, look at that. Side broke out. To be an exceptional cutter, you've got to, got to be cutting all the time. You know, and in reality, I am only a mediocre cutter because I don't do enough. Once the opal has taken its final shape, rare earth metal compound, cerium oxide, is used as a polishing agent on a felt wheel to give the gem a reflective surface. A man is going to want more than one stone. <laughs> You're not bloody right. <laughs> Let's go and see what the other one's got underneath it, eh? We've got to go in this direction, you know? Like, diesel prices have gone through the absolute roof. If we don't start making more money, it's, it's inevitable we'll go down the drain. How you going with it? <laughs> I need more stock. <laughs> I've got three more for you. Yeah, I couldn't get anything else out of them. Yeah. But I, I took my time on these. The Bushmen have crystal opal on a grey base, featuring the full spectrum of colours. The gems have been cut and polished, ready to be set in jewellery, weighing a total of 4.7 grams. What are you doing? Oh, I was trying to get this going. The battery's flat. Well, guess what? what? We just got those stones up on the website. Yeah. Twelve and a half thousand dollars if we get what we want on the website. Mate, that's bloody good news. So when do we get the money? Well, I don't know. They've got to sell first, mate, but they're up there now, so hopefully we'll get some money soon. As extreme summer temperatures approach, marking the end of the mining season, the Bushmen are pinning all their hopes on a new website to sell their opal. Me and Les are definitely old school, and we're not much good with these computers. I'm pretty good at digging a hole, and uh, the stuff she does is far more complicated than what I do. Rod, come here. Wrong now. I just want you to have a look at this. <laughs> what, for real? Yeah, for real. Both of them are sold? Yeah. You yeah, beauty! <laughs> <laughs> What's he belling her about, Les? Oh, i got no idea. Hey, Les, what? come here! That's about 10 grand. Yeah. I thought you wanted me to fix the truck. What does that say, Les? Sold. Two out of three. Oh, well done. But look. Look at the prices on the two of them. How cool is that? We cut yeah. out that middle man and yeah. sell direct to the public. Uh -huh. You know, this could be a real thing for us. And we might make target, you know, by putting it on the website. I don't know. But we're certainly better off doing it this way than we are selling it all to buyers. We'll be eating steak tonight, Les. That's it. <laughs> hey? How close do you reckon you can get there, Angel? Still got a couple more inches. The excavator's right on the edge of this loose dirt. I don't want to accidentally get full in the hole with you. Yeah, well, I don't want you doing that either. You've got a 25-ton machine in front of me. Our ramp here is getting steeper and steeper. 
So we're not gaining the reach that we need to get onto this wall. You know, there's no point in working if you can't reach the open face, because that's where the opal is, so... Normally, we'd bring the bulldozer in to push out this dirt to give us more room. But unfortunately, that's at home getting repairs and service. Yeah, I can't reach that wall, is he? I'm just gonna hop out and have a bit of a look. Yeah, no worries. Oh, that's so damn steep, man. I know. It's like an avalanche. That's teetering right on the edge of actually slipping into this hole with That's you. That's what worries me, and I've got nowhere to go because no, there's no don't. way out of here quick. Yeah, I think we're stuffed here, Angel. Just weeks of the mining season remain, and the misfits, Angel Dempsey, new recruit Izzy Glenn, and mentor and financer Opal Joe Kalmar have been forced to down tools, waiting for vital bulldozer repairs. We need somewhere to mine. Yeah. What about my mine? Yeah, that could work. It's accessible. Very shallow, hey? So it should be yep. pretty easy to work. At least that way we're still mining, because, yeah, we can't do it here. Izzy's mine is on the tea tree opal field, almost four kilometres from Angel's claim. It's been worked for decades by old timers, but still holds pockets of virgin ground. Joe's got to be a part of this decision on moving claims in the meantime, because he's a money man. So why are we here? Well, I've put it to Angel, you know, basically rather than wait a week and a half for parts for the dozer, why don't we come and work here for the next week or so? All right, shall we have a look? It's stagnant yeah. at the moment, so yeah. we may as well do something with it. Got way more room than lunatic here. Yeah, but that's because here is very little virgin ground. But this has got a good rep for good crystals, though. So is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I mean, better off not boxing in the excavator, to be honest, you know. But there is no choice. You're really going to have to prove yourselves here, because the pockets are here, but they'll be very, very small. All right, cheers. All right, let's go get this sorted, eh? Do it. A hey, week and a half only. If you don't find anything, I'm canning it. Yep. All right? I don't want to waste diesel. Oh, that seems a bit soft. That looks awfully loose. Holy shit, that's a tunnel in me. Is that a drive? Oh, that's a good sign. I mean, having this drive here proves that there was opal here. I'd love to at least make an entrance. Yeah, we're digging it out and having a look. I'll jump in and start scooping. There's a couple of levels down here that I'm seeing at the moment. See that boulder under there? Oh, yeah. There's a crack. Yeah, it's a beauty. That'd be worth, you know, digging out. What I have noticed on that boulder is it has fractures in it, and that's where the silica or the water would have been laying for millions of years, which in turn will produce opal. Look at that crack. She's a beauty. <laughs> That's got a thick opal face on it and cut the opal off the rock. So if it's really good crystal opal, we're on a win. So what do you reckon? I'll give it a crack. Give it a crack. Hopefully she splits open nicely. Cool. Moment of truth. Look how nicely that's breaking her hand. Oh, what's your toes? Please. Oh, um, bugger. No. That could have been something special. Yeah. No opal. Not meant to be. No. This is still mud. What's that, Angel? Ooh. I've never huh. seen that. That's a good sign. That's a bit of trace, bit of opal. Almost looks like fire opal. Fire opal, named for its flame-like colour, is predominantly found in Mexico, with recent discoveries in Western Australia. But finding a deposit in Andamuka is extremely rare. Depending on quality, it can be worth thousands of dollars per gram. Now, I've seen lots of honey pot. You know, that's what Andamuka's famous for. And yeah, it's brown, it's ugly, it's not that bright. But anything, no matter what the size we're picking up, because worst case is, you know, it's only worth a couple of bucks. Well, a couple of bucks buy you a sandwich, eh? So, I'm keen to show Joe. Is winning? Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know 
what it is. Like, it's crystal clear. Yeah. This is what we found. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm not seeing anything like this, ever. And it's not fire opal from WA, right? Because we're in Andamooka. Well, I think this is actually better. But it's not the strong orange like this. Not this this crystal clear, anyway. Now okay. the excitement's oh. kicking in. I'll, I'll send some away. I'll get them cut quickly. And if it actually ends up with colour in it, it'll be worth heaps. I think it's uh, the rarest thing I've ever seen. I think it looks better than diamond, to be honest with you. Well done. Cool. <laughs> the misfits are about to discover the true value of the rare Andamooka fire opal, unearthed from Izzy's claim after it was cut and faceted by a professional jeweller in town. Hey, look how bright it is, though. Like, do you want how? me to open that oh, one? Oh, look at that. That is stunning. Oh, oh my God, it's got nice. colour. It's got colour in it? Look like, the purple. Like, copper opal colour? Yeah. You see that, oh, is look it? look at that. It actually does have colour in it. You know, I've seen all different types. Never with colour and never that level of clarity. Right, it is the true, like, once in a million find. That's how I see this, eh? It's got greens, it's got blues. I mean, look at the reds on the back from it, you know? Wow. <laughs> That's so damn cool. That what is cool. absolutely stunning. The misfits have five stones of unique Andamooka fire opal. Brilliant orange with small flashes of yellow, green and purple. They've been cut and faceted, weighing 0 0.7 grams. So what are we looking at? Well, look, value-wise, say five grand bottom dollar of this, and say with that there, I'd be around two two thousand a carat for them, you know. So that's eight thousand five. That's you know thirteen grand, eh? Wow! So, what a good right. dumb well. Yeah. The clarity on the stone is is absolutely off the scale. It's it's, it's beautiful. But now that it's faceted, we can actually see the sparkles of colour. Is for now, you know, Izzy's claim's proven itself. There's only a few weeks left of the season, so we've got a good claim to go to. It's a backup plan. Bloody hell, it's a, it's a miracle. In the last days of the mining season, siblings Sophia and Isaac Andreu, the Opal Whisperers, are risking their lives working a crumbling 30-year-old mine. It's super hot now. We're getting close up to the 50s. Anybody in their right minds has left this entire area. Opal waits for no man. We need this new mine to pay a load. I want to come back in next season with big machinery. Time's ticking, man. About to walk into another one of our mines. Dad's had this one for a while. Yeah, come on down, love. Our family legacy is um, one of the most important dynamic driving forces of this entire operation. Well, I'm just looking at the uh, number of pieces that have just been finished. Magic, sheer magic. Our parents did this before us, and Opal's all I've ever done, and Opal is all I'm ever going to do. Our season target is $150,000. If we don't find Opal in the new underground mine and we go home empty handed, we've officially failed. We're on a night. Oh, Isaac, I think Color? we. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but we're getting patterns and we've got a it is full nut formation yeah. now. Just days are left in their mining season, and siblings Sophia and Isaac Andreu are honing in on a promising opal pocket. Is there colour in that? I don't know, yeah, I've got to bring him out. It is a conglomerate, you know? A conglomerate is a boulder containing yawa nuts and matrix opal fused together by ironstone. I'm getting her out in one piece. Come on, baby. <sighs> sort of like a tooth extraction. Come on, baby. Woo! Oh, here we go. <laughs> what do you reckon? Let's have a look. I was really hoping that it would be full of colour. We'll take it and check it, hey? Yeah, put it in the bucket. Worth sawing open, I'd say, instead yeah, of... Yeah, I think right. you're right. Yeah. Right, time. Swapsies. No more pu pussyfooting around. We're going to... Try and get that level at eye level. We're not afraid of a bit of hard work, are we? Certainly not. Little, where'd it go? Well, that's come out. Look at that. That's a nice nut. And there it is there. Come on, baby. Wait, red, red. I've got red. Red colour? Yep. Really? I've got red. Red is the rarest opal colour. Let's see. 
You can't miss it. The most valuable and highly desired by buyers. No. Woo! Even a tiny bit gets you so excited. That's electric red <laughs> and <laughs> green. Nice job. This is a really nice stone. Good stuff. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's more there too. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get that conglomerate. That big block that you found. Well, that looks good. Yeah. Sophia and Isaac are down to their final pieces of opal. I'm glad that he's optimistic. Desperate to reach target before season end. Really hoping there's something in this one. Really there. Come on, baby. Hey. <laughs> That's only the tip of the iceberg as well. If there's colour on the outside like that, hopefully the inside's got more. Opal always pulls to the bottom. So I want to get to the bottom. Here's the first piece. <laughs> so good. That's so good. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Isaac, have you seen this? Nice colour. <laughs> There's every colour in this. Can you see the red? Hey, hey. <laughs> One more cut, Sophia. This is our money. We've got a crystal centre in this for sure. And this means that we've got immediate material to sell right at the bloody end of the season. You know, 12th hour, Dad would call it, the 12th hour. <laughs> it has everything inside. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Look at that! Are you kidding me? This has everything. Oh, matrix. It's a big lumerate. It's got matrix. It's got flaming red in inside there. Can you see that? Yeah. A double-sided crystal center with matrix around it. That's so ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you want red, baby? Are. You got red. Yeah. You want matrix? You've got matrix. Crystal center? Why not? I feel blessed. I really feel blessed tonight. Oh. <laughs> we need to confirm the value of this parcel. So this time we're going to take it to Eddie Maguire. He's been here ever since I remember, since I was a child. He's a mentor, he's a, um, a friend, and he's an inspiration. So we'd like to get your, your valuation, <laughs> if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I've brought them here. We've brought them here. You want to show, you ready? You go for okay, it. Eddie, these are, these are the stones that we've produced there. Wow. Wow, rare. Look at this. Electric colours coming from there. <laughs> Look at the kernel. Think, I know. Yeah. Are you impressed? That's black. Yeah. That's gem. Gorgeous. So here comes the tough question. Yeah, the values, the, what's it worth? You know, I understand. Your expertise. It's really hard. Yeah. Different colours, different pattern. It, so it becomes difficult to sometimes really get this true value. 15, 20 grand mm -hmm. for a piece like that. Oh. Look at this kit. It's deep, it's black. Yep. 10 grand. Yep. So we're at 30 for the two stones. The kicker. Six. 6,000, so now we're at 36. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, without looking closely, but I can oh. still see it's really clean stone. Yes. Four to five. Four to five, four and a half. Yeah, yeah. So now we've got a family or a set of conglomerate slabs. I can see the gem in there. I mean, this beautiful green it blends in with the blue. One and a half. Nine and a half plus the uh, 40,500, we're up to 50. I like that one, it's, it's a cool piece, eh? It looks deep. But then, six or seven. So that's six and a half? Yeah, yeah. 56 and a half. This little baby. Yeah, the firefly. It's small, but it's bright. Three grand. 59 and a half, and there's one to go. And then we had the, the little baby of the family, tribal pattern, nice uh, little commercial piece. I think the is priced at $500, and that rounds off that, that total. Right? <laughs> that makes it 60 right. grand. 60. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well Thank done. You well opinion. done. I'm just happy that they found some really beautiful stones because you just don't see that sort of colour every day. Not a bad end to the season, the heat and the uh, bugs and the cave-ins and everything has been worth it because we've got 60 grand. We've ended up with a great value and it's just an awesome way to end this mining run, so very happy. We've been dreaming of getting an excavator. We need big machines. Besides that, there's a legacy that we're upholding here. We didn't just 
land here by accident. We were put here by mum and dad. And we want to uphold that legacy. We want to take it to the next level. Hey, Angel, this rain's starting to come down. What do you reckon? Still give it a crack or not? I'll come down a little bit. We'll try it out. If it gets too slippery, I'm going to call it. OK, heading up. The end of the opal season is just days away. As summer storms break over Andamooka, forcing Angel and Izzy to work dangerous conditions in one last push. That rain's getting pretty heavy. Yeah, hopefully it's stopped, otherwise, yeah, I'll have to climb back out. Just be careful, Angel. All right. Whoa. Angel, you got to get out of there. You're sliding. Hey, I... Get out of there. This is not the ideal situation. You know, as much as what we want to find opal, you know, I don't want to be going scraping her out of a hole. Just check out all that mud. Bloody hell. Oh, much better. We have to call it quits, you know. It's slippery. We're not prepared to die for it either, so, you know, call it quits, try again later and see how this weather goes. Oh, wow. This That's is not, not good. good. Not good at all. The end of the mining season is lapping at the boots of the misfits, with heavy overnight rain flooding their open-cut mine. You know, that's the end of this claim. It is the end of this claim. Because this water is going to take months to dry up. Well, if this is like this, wonder what my claim looks like. If this has got water in it, most likely yours has got water in it, which means, you know, all we've got left is the black light on foot. Well, if that's all we've got, Angel and I have decided to try and take the bobcat out to my claim, to the honey hole, and we're going to give it one last nudge. This is it. This attachment, the back scratcher, is a beast. The back scratcher is a chainsaw made of high quality heat treated steel designed for digging trenches. It's been modified to cut into walls up to a depth of 1.5 metres. I'll try and dig under the opal level here and then I'll bring it all down. Sounds good. It's hard. Boink, boink, boink. This is the last push for us. You know, if we don't find anything today, we're done. That'll have to do. We'll go get the jackhammer. Yep. Fingers crossed we got opal in there. I hope so. Now we're cooking with hydraulic oil. Yeah. I'm pretty keen to see this. You know, I've seen the back scratcher work now, so now it's jackhammer. All right. The 159 kilogram hydraulic jackhammer mounted on the loader has eight times more impact power than its handheld counterpart. I'm trying to prove myself to everyone out here, you know, that I am a miner, you know, I'm not just someone doing it on a whim. You know, it's not easy. At the moment, we're just doing whatever we can because we've got no time. That's the biggest thing. Oh, my God. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> you see that colour? Oh, oh no way. way. Look, Look at, at it. Oh, holy oh God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, River. No. We've got something. That's a massive chunk. That's oh, probably an ounce wow. in itself. Where did that come from? Got a bit of a cavity here. Oh, oh Izzy. Oh, I just look, knocked it. I can it. see that from here. I just knocked it. <laughs> oh, oh, no way. That's just as intense as this other piece. We oh, must have God. hit a pocket. Look at that. Oh, my God. That is absolutely gorgeous. There's got to be more. They can't just be two pieces. And they've both got clean breaks on them too. So. Angel. Angel. Oh. Angel. Oh, oh, look, look, that's look, another look. massive piece. Oh, oh God. my God. Oh, my God. Look on that angle, that pink and the blue. That is awesome. Now keep finding pieces like this, Izzy, please. Oh, I'm going to try. No <laughs> Oh my god! That's a 
is Chanka. Oh my God, done it. What an effort. We've done it. Look at it. Hey Joe. Yeah? Come have a look at what we got. You got the week's findings there. Yep. Back at home base, the misfits are about to get a dollar value of their final haul of the season. Come stand here, we're too excited, Joe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, they're nice. They're nice, Angel. That's what we found when we were black lighting. They so used to pretty well finish for the season. Well, you haven't hit your target, man, you know, like, I mean. No. You're not going to make it with this. This is a failed as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's pretty. Shit. We're gonna find what we can find. Oh, yeah. But we do have one last surprise for you. What do you got there? A oh, bag. Right. It's of... got colour in it. Holy! <laughs> you don't even need a light. Holy hell! That's semi-black. That's skin to skin, semi-black, dark crystal. That's money, and that's like some of the best you'll see. I mean, that is that is about as fine as great opal as you can get. That is absolutely yeah, I mean, strong. Like, <laughs> I almost need glasses. Hey, like, I mean, that is, that is absolutely strong as it gets. The opal from Izzy's claim is stunning semi-black crystal opal, a wash with rare reds and pinks. It's in the rough and weighs approximately 200 grams. You know, we found real full-spectrum colour opal. Very damn cool. That's money. That's serious money. What do you reckon it's worth? Well, I'd, I'd put a guess at 35, 40. What do you reckon, Angel? I said 40, but yeah. Well, I can tell you now, every day of the week in one second, you'll get 60,000 for this. 60, oh 000. my God, yes! Yeah. <laughs> in a heartbeat. Give up! <laughs> no? I valued it at 60,000 because I figure what Angel was going to do was quick sell it. But in truthfulness, it's worth a hell of a lot more than that. We're shy of the 160000 that we set, but back before I started open mining, I never even thought about that much money. So I'm quite proud of myself. I'm quite proud of Izzy. It's awesome. So we haven't done too bad. Considering... Well, considering the whole weather's been against you, you've done all right. You know, I've left nothing on the table. I've put in everything I possibly can to be able to have this opportunity in this partnership. I'm still going home with some money in my pocket. You know, all of that money will be going back into my gym. That was pretty good, but I've got no doubt Izzy will be back. I've got no doubt Angel will be back. Definitely bigger and better things next year. You know, Joe's given me a couple of hints on what's happening, and I can't wait to, you know, start moving dirt again. There you go. There, Lise. There's colour in that. But, yeah, we've got to be very careful. The material around it's very soft and can fracture the, the crystal. In Yawa, Queensland, the Digi Diggers are desperate to find Opal to finance building their online metaverse store for a final sale before extreme weather shuts down the mining season. What's this sparkle here? Far out. Whoa. OK. That's awesome. This is going to get us to the metaverse. Yeah, definitely it's going to get us to the metaverse. And, and it keeps on going. This is the next bit. There's another bit here. I'm so excited to see this in the sunlight. Yeah, now they're gorgeous. Well done. Yep. You. What do you think we can get for this? It could be a couple of thousand dollars worth of opal here, but I don't think we're going to be able to get top dollar. I hope Rob is in a good mood today. Yeah. Rob is, is our friend from Yawa, and he's got a mine as well, and we know that he buys opal sometimes. But for one thing, we're sure of. We need to make this sale today. I mean, it's gonna hurt just getting a thousand dollars for it, but what's worth more? Yeah, it's way more important that we sell the night than worry about a couple of hundred dollars over this rough. Yeah. What are you up to, Rob? Oh, not much, mate, not much. Well, we're in a bit of a tight patch. We're a bit low on funds. So we thought maybe, maybe yes. you're interested in buying some mobile with us. Well, what are you looking to get out of it, do you think? Yeah, we're happy to let it go for a grand. 
Yeah, we just need a little bit more to like finalize the area in the metaverse that we want to sell the Opal in. No, it is nice stuff, but I've got a fair bit laying around. Probably, yeah, maybe off your seven. How would you feel about that? Well, we really need a grant to finish this metaverse. I mean, we don't want to bag you here either, you know? No, 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 we, <laughs> we won't come to that. Yeah. Well, seeing as though you're doing it tough and you need it, I'll, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do the grand. How's that sound? That sounds great. OK, thanks very much. Thank you. Really good. Yes, thank you. You really helped us out. Rob knows what it's like, you know, when you're down, you're luck and, you know, things are tough. So what goes around comes around. We've got all these rooms and these spaces, but I feel like the night is the kingstone. And I reckon like we can place it right here and maybe quite large. Make it big, floating, and then you can just walk around. Their metaverse showroom and online store ready, the Digi Diggers can now simulate a real world shopping experience to entice buyers anywhere in the world. All they need now is the night and its digital version. You reckon they'll be here soon? I hope so. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, I'm quite nervous, you know. Um, that's, that's our biggest find for the year. We just gifted it away, so this is going to be the first time we're going to see the nights. Matthew and Adrian, the Brisbane jewellers who handcrafted the night, have made the 1,000-kilometre journey to deliver the pendant and 3D scan. We've made this piece to be something that's a big standout, so hopefully Josiah and Lisa love it. Okay, Man, we're waiting coming. so long for I know. this. We've got a buyer already. He just said, you know, first Opal in the metaverse, I want to buy it. So um, I'm nervous about that too. You know, will he like it? Welcome back. Thank you. Hey, Matt. Can grab the other side of it? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, what an entrance. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Here's the big nice. moment. Yeah. Wow. We even had the box custom made, so. Wow. Yeah, Ke Beautiful. Kevin made the box himself. Beautiful. Genuine ebony. For the yeah, black and squares on top. Ebony and wood. Burl. Yep, so wow. Aust Australian Burl. And we custom wow. made the lock as well. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> that is so cool! Oh my wow. god, look that at that! That is so cool! <laughs> wow! So, on top of that um, amazing opal that's in there, obviously, there's almost 80 diamonds. There's aquamarine, sapphires, and the pieces in 18 karat, um, yellow and white gold. The Knight, a one-of-a-kind pendant, features a massive crystal opal with an ornate handcrafted backing involving more than 200 hours of work. As well, we've also had 3D scanned. Ready to go in the metaverse? Beautiful. There is your copy. This is a collaboration that brings together the old and the new mining and jewelry making, the very traditional type of skill set. Sarah and Lisa are bringing that into the new age. Oh my God, like, there you go, that's it. Oh, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that we are very proud of this piece. The asking price is $42,000 for the pendant and its digital asset, with the Digi Diggers receiving half if negotiations are successful. What do you think, Dustin, you like it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. So the price is forty-two thousand. Yeah, what do you what do you think? This is such a new experience. I look at this thing, you know, on the other side of the world, and just trying to determine how you know is it really worth forty-two? It's new beginnings, and it's the first stone. It's the first opal being sold in the metaverse. I mean, I know. I'm always I'm always a little wary of being the first. Sometimes it doesn't work. Mm, this is very it. true. Well, I appreciate your insight, Jesse. And uh, I see a lot of potential and a lot of history here. You're getting the opal, the history, and yeah, it's digital twin. You have a very persuasive reason. Can't deny that. Yeah, this is exciting. Uh, I would love to purchase this beautiful pendant from you. That's amazing. That sounds great. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, proceed with this transaction. Cool. All right. Well, I'll drop you the link in the chat. 
and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Sounds great. This is a, a very big moment for us as well, so, so yeah, thank you. All right, guys, we'll see you later. We'll uh, hit you up when we've got the Meta Rock number two. <laughs> We've done it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they bought it, so <laughs> it's done. We've smashed our target. We have blown through our $60,000 target. We're officially selling Opals in the Metaverse. I'm so proud of what we achieved this year. Like, it's been an adventure, it's been a journey. We plan to sell a lot more Opal in the Metaverse. We plan to do more amazing pieces just like the night. We're gonna go for a holiday for the summer and then next year we'll come back and continue. We'll be working on the Metaverse, we'll be finding more Opal and hope the world is ready for us. This is official, that's it. Digi Diggers are here, mate. We're here and we're here to stay. So let's go. <laughs>
The final chance of a successful opal season for the Blacklighters rests in a small pocket of opal-bearing dirt from the bottom of their flooded claim. Righto, John, that's up to you now, mate. We've seen the opal, we broke some up, so it's in there. Righto. Opal fluoresces under black light. Oh. Allowing John to snatch it from the conveyor belt. <laughs> Here we go. It's all starting to heat up now. Your yeah, beauty. A bit more. Starting to get a bit thicker. It's good. Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> now that's a chunk. I think today's going to be a good day, mate. Oh, yeah. Chunks. Oh, look at the colour coming through there. Oh, chunky. There's a couple of big tiles that came through, like this guy. They're probably the ones that pulled in run over, eh? That's a great finish to the season, lads, eh? Yeah, Ooh. man, that is sick. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> The Blacklighter's final haul is white-based opal, sparkling with green and blue and infused with streaks of vibrant red. It's in the rough and there's 700 grams. I'm not coming here just to see you guys, although I like you. It's the business, right? 22, I'll give you. 40. That's it. No, for, we're still apart, Mark. 28. Nah, nah. 28. There's no way we're doing 28, Sanan. It's not happening, eh? I didn't make any money the last time. You've got to go lower, Mark. You might as well have... Look, this is bullshit. 32 grand, Mark. No. Nah. I'm going, seriously. I've not gone a dollar more. I'm out if you don't want to. You going? So you got, I'm going, that's it. 32. You Good on you, man. Good to see you. You too. All right. We'll catch up next time. Yeah. See you, mate. I don't know. Was 32 that bad, though? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it was. What if we say we'll throw these in for... We've got to get something extra out of them. Can't stop at 32. 35, right. dead set bottom. That's it, though. 35's yeah, it. All right, I'll see if he's... All right. Sanani! He's grumpy today, isn't he? He seems a little he bit grumpy. He seems though, right? grumpy today. Tired. Tired or something. Sanan, you needed, you need a bit more sleep last night or something. Look, I'm tired. I, I, yeah, well, I, I know, told you so... I need a... You, you what do you think of the fossils tonight? Look, 400 million year old fossil. They're very good, very good specimens. Yeah, well, we can do 35 for the lot. The specimens, oval. All right, let's do 35. All right, mate. Done? Yeah, done. Right. We knew it. Yeah, well Cheers, done. man, good stuff. All right, very good. We hit target, boys. Come on. We hit target, Come on, eh? that's, Come on man. That's what pretty good. Done, you did yeah. an awesome job. You've done well. Good first year, Very man. well done, well, man. You've stepped up. You've stepped You're helping up. me a lot. Yeah, I'm proud of what I've achieved and what the boys have achieved. We've all done real well. You know, got to where we needed to be. So, yeah, definitely proud of everyone. I'm feeling pumped. I really enjoyed the year, eh? And I can't wait for next season. 100% proud of what we've achieved this season, mate. Like, just to get to 350G, it's insane. Cheers to Cooper Petey, man. Thanks, Cooper. We love you. We love Cooper Petey, man.